Hello and welcome back to The Super Show. I am Jonesy and today I'm hosting because Chris is still not with us. But once again, I'm joined by Jamie. Say hello, Jamie. Hi, everyone. Hello. And we have a special guest this week because we're also joined by Sam from 101 Facts. Hello, Sam. Hello. I took a drink at the wrong time. You didn't at all, mate. I'll, I'm going to do you a little introduction just in case there's oh, anyone okay. out there who doesn't know who you are. Um, that I would be surprised, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, because uh, Sam is the man behind and in front of 101 Facts, uh, the channel on YouTube. And if that wasn't enough, he also works across the all-time entertainment franchise. Uh, he is a Goliath in the YouTube game. So thank you very much, Sam, for um, joining us um, this week. No worries. No, me being in front of and behind 101 is a weird image. But but weirdly, yeah. it's word for word what my Tinder bio says. So <laughs> yes, so if you can't get them with the fact that you've got a good job, you're also like, I am also well known online. Yeah, I also appear in front of and behind things online. Nice. Uh, well, anyone out there, if you want to get in contact with us, if you want to leave a comment, if you want to say anything to us, you can reach us at Super Show Pod on Twitter and on YouTube. This podcast is on YouTube, but it's also available on major podcasting platforms like Spotify, iTunes and Google Podcasts. Um, but first up, the first thing we always have to do is mention our amazing Patreons who literally keep this little train chugging along. Um, so you can see some on screen right now, but I also want to give a special shout out to Aaron Cameron, Athletic Gravy, OnlyFans.com forward slash JB Body Pillows, aka Brett, uh, aka Shellshock, Freddie K Official, Hacksaw Book Reed, Jesper Camdal Nielsen, Javela Cujo, Leo Murga, Lonnie Thompson, Manuel Guerrero, Martin Skihan, Mindful Pig, Nathan Piers, Scary Omen, Starful Kid, blimey, um, and also the big dogs, it's Peaswad and the Dude Abides. Thank you so much, guys, for supporting Woo! us, for being members of our Patreon. You really do keep this um keep this little show going. So thank you very much. And if you haven't already joined our Patreon, why not consider joining? If you join uh, for $2 a month, you can get access to our Discord and you can talk to me, Jamie and Chris and all the other amazing Patreons um, all the time. We're on there all the time, aren't we, Jamie? A lot it's of the time anyway. I'm on there at weird hours of the night, you know, whenever I need to talk to someone at 4am to, to go to sleep because that's the only thing that kind of sets my nerves at ease these days. That's where I go. Do you know what I found that recently I've been doing a lot of stuff on my PC and I actually go to the PC forum to ask the I guys see you in there all the fucking me. time, dude. And every time I go over there, I'm like, what are these fucking nerds talking about? What the fuck is a NVIDIA? Well, they're, they're actually, I'm like, how do I do this? Because I got some new RAM and one of the guys was like, it won't just work at the speed it says because your machine will put it automatically to like 2066 and no oh god what is it 2066 see, see Jonesy megahertz? you've already thrown yourself in at the deep end you've out nerded yourself you're lost I have and he's like you've got to change something in your bio I was like I'm so glad there's people out here who know what all this shit means because I really don't um, but <laughs> anyway intro out of the way thank you very much for joining us um, so I have a comment of the week and then we're going to uh, do a little quick fire interview of Sam just in case um, you wanted to sure. learn about his Gaming history. Um, I know you, Sam, and I know you're a, uh, a gamer, but some people out there might want to know a little bit more. So, they may not yeah, know that. They may not know that, So and now they will. And also, indeed. Jonesy's cooked up some questions that I actually don't know what your answers for them are going to be, oh. and I'm looking forward to hearing them so I can judge <laughs> you and know where I'm going to sort of place you in my pantheon of friends. Sort of, are you going to oh, shift higher or lower? It, the stakes could not be higher. Okay. Yeah. All right, let me, let me, okay. Sure. Brace yourself. So first up, we do I have a comment of the week first. It's just a quick one. And I thought this was um, true and very and funny and apt. So we, we um, given the whole pre-order situation from the last couple of weeks, Zach Hodges said, I think it's a dick move to go into a game shop and pre-order a digital only next gen console. It's like going into a blockbuster back in the day and buying a Netflix subscription. So, it's um, <laughs> yeah. sad, but sad, but true. It's one of the things we talked about last week, wasn't it? How... That all digital console, and with, which I guess the PlayStation and the Xbox both now have versions of, might just be the cooling card, like the final thing that that the thing that kind of signs the death of brick and mortar stores, which have been on the way out for a long time already. But Jesus, it doesn't look good. Do you know what, so, so I'm not as bad quite as getting the digital version, but I went into my local game to pre-order a PlayStation Five, um, and I realised I hadn't been into it. Oh, actually, that's a lie. I went in there the week before. But you before bought the that, fucking Funko Pops. 
<laughs> I bought the Marvel um, Avengers Funko Pops. All Sam, Pops. he oh. bought all eight of them, and he bought them in person. He's probably oh, on the sex word. offenders register now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, that's what all the game ones. Yeah, the yeah, game. He walks. He walks Funko up to the Pops, counter like oh, this. My. I'd like all of these Funko Pops at once, please. Yeah, they, they probably thought you were on your way to a children's ward after that. To no, take them out. They, they probably think he's about to spend the next afternoon hanging out the back of a white van saying, kids, I've got Funko Pops, <laughs> huh? Yeah. Do you know what? I stand by. That That game might be questionable, but the Funko Pops are very cool. And the Stark Tech outfits that you get uh, that are wicked, and I really like those Funko Pops, so I'm glad I bought them. Well, there we are. As long as you're glad you bought them. Yeah, and you know what? I will. Uh, I can see in the background of Sam's little um, webcam that he's got the the shield yeah. there for Captain America have, and uh, Milnor. Milnir? How do you yes, say it? Milnor's Mil- there as well. Milnir. It's and... not. A, it's not a Greek dip, Jonesy. It's <laughs> t- <t-> <laughs> sneaky. Um, so yeah, I think in person he might appreciate my Funko Pop collection. Totally. I mean, I've got. I've got a few. You can't see them. They're down here. But and also on the podcast, this is rubbish. Oh, uh, there if you, you just go. listen to it. But there's a Captain America Funko Pop. Oh, that's when he's got the hammer from the end of the, that movie. It is. There you go. It is that indeed. Uh, I mainly have them because my friends and relatives panic, I think, at Christmas and don't know what to buy me. It's just a safe bet. Right. Right, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Okay, yeah, then. Yeah, it's just like a... I'm, he'll need one. I'm going to change my stance. You two oh. might keep brick and mortar gaming stores in business for a little while longer, <laughs> for as long as they have to resort to selling this weird tap. But people like me, who used to go in there just to buy games and probably don't anymore because so much of it is digital... I'm not doing our part, so I guess it is kind of a dick move. But then they're selling it, yeah. right? So you can go in and buy it. That's the that's the way it works. Oh yeah, that's very true. Yeah, at least you're buying something from them. It's better than buying. Imagine, nothing, right? imagine if they had put up a fuss. Imagine if game stores like Game and GameStop and Best Buy and whatever, and like we're refusing to stock and sell the digital versions of these consoles because they are a threat to our business. That'd that be would crazy. Be absolutely, ma- yeah. That would, mad. yeah, that would be mad, and it would be a kind of shot in the foot kind of thing. Mm. But they have to they have to sell like random other stuff now because yeah. obviously as you say people are just downloading games. I think the last game store I went in, uh, they had like a little display out and they had statues and that kind of thing and t-shirts. And then randomly they had a um Del Boy dressing gown. What oh, wow. the fuck? Yeah. That's like, so uh, odd. There's no I mean, to my knowledge, I don't know. There's no only Fools and Horses game, is there? No, if not, maybe surely there should not. be. Surely I don't not. think so. But it's just, I mean, that, I mean, it's fine to have like uh, at least stuff that's tangential to video games in there, but a random 80s and 90s sitcom themed bit of bedwear is a bit of a... That's a some of them, uh, uh, Have you been into the ones that now they have to sell like um, almost like a CEX, they sell like um, secondhand electronics yeah, yeah. and iPads and things like that. It's, it's a sad it's a sad state of affairs that they have to do that, but I guess it is the state of the industry, right? So that's the kind of way it's going. Yeah. And to be fair, even in the in the comment itself, right, Zach references Blockbuster, and that's just another reminder that these companies, as sad as it is, do have to come and go with the times. And as someone who worked on Blockbuster as recently as twenty twelve, I can tell you it was strange realizing that you were trying to con people yeah. into accepting a failing business model, but that's <laughs> that that's all you can do. That's all you can do. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay, so um, let's should we hit Sam with some of these quick fire questions? Oh, fucking and, and do let's, it. Uh, let's I'm find ready. out the real info about Sam right now. Okay, you ready? Do so you want my um, mother, my mother's maiden name, right? And uh, yes, please. And okay. the second and fourth, I mean third and first numbers of your no. Not really. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, yeah, these are these are pretty quick fire, but you, you can you can expand if you'd like to. Uh, you know, we, okay. we're just okay. we're just trying to learn about you. So, question number one, Sam: What okay. was the first vid- video game you remember playing? The very first one. Very first one, and it still holds a special place in my heart, is... Uh, oh, actually, maybe it isn't. So I was about to say Rugrat Search for Reptar, because that was, oh, a, right, hu- okay. that was a huge, huge thing for me when I bought the PS1. Uh, I, still, I still fondly remember it. I still remember it because I remember reading in a book that came with a, uh, a gaming magazine that there was a secret area in that game, and that blew my mind, the fact that there was a secret... Right. Like, a secret place... Like on the golfing level, if you went down into the pyramids, there was like um, extra reptile bars and and like a mummy, like a okay, a Five Nights at Freddy's. Did you find it? Did you? Yeah. Did you find the area? Yeah, and it nice. really and it scared me, really scared me, because I was I was only six <laughs> or something, and it like there was this random animatronic mummy following you around. Horrible. Okay. Uh, but but I've that, seen or, the game, but I've never played it. 
And it was either that or I remember playing GoldenEye 64 uh, at a friend of my mum's house. And that was incredible. I was giddily laughing at the fact that I could see someone on the screen that was that, that was in the room with me, but they were also in the game. It's a hard thing to kind of explain, but it blew my mind at the time. And I remember just just laughing at it, like being like, I can't believe this, just laughing. It was weird. Goldeneye is, yeah. is a great one. I mean, I, I had a lot of fun playing that when I was a kid, absolutely. Don't yeah. you were about 30 hard. when Goldeneye came out. <laughs> How dare you, sir? I think I was about, I think I was 14, maybe 14 when it came out. I don't know. Okay, maybe. All right. Question number two, console or PC? Console. Because I'm recording this on Mac. (laughs) um, Yeah. yeah. Uh, But yeah, I've always been console over PC. Uh, I mean, I've spoken to you guys about it before, but but it's, it's the main thing is because when I buy a game for my PlayStation, I know that it's going to work on that PlayStation. I don't have to update anything with uh, drivers or memory, etc. Wow, well, <laughs> nowadays. Well, but nowadays. Oh, hardware, hardware, I see what you mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you see what I mean? Like, it's not a... Um, I know it's going to work sort of thing. I know things have shifted yes. around now and, like, things have a thousand gigabyte updates, etc. But uh, but no, console, console all the way for me. I'd love a PC, That's a very though. good point. If anyone's offering, I'd love a I'd love a desktop PC to stream <laughs> on and stuff. I think the plug and playability of consoles is a massive selling point for me as yeah. well. Like you say, you know that you can go, you can get that game, and you can play it. You don't have to worry about drivers, hardware, graphics cards. Am I getting the best version of the frame rate? Like it's, that's how it was meant to be. Played. Yeah, I'm yeah. with you on that. Good. Okay, I'm, I'm glad I'm not alone. Nah. Uh, as a as a kid, question number three: Did you hang out at the arcade? Not really, no, actually. No, not really. I was kicked out of an arcade and I was a very goody two-shoes kid and I was kicked out of an arcade because I they thought I was pressing... So in, I don't know whether or not the majority of listeners, et cetera, are from America or whatever, but in Britain, we have the 2P machines that uh, oh, yes. it's essentially a machine that you put a, a coin into and then through sheer luck, you might win some of the same coin. Um, <laughs> or you or you would never get it but there's occasionally random stuff sitting on top of the other coins that you, yeah, like all, we all, you always know it's glued there but it's still very yeah. enticing yeah and like it's a key ring and you think I have to have that key ring I can't live my life without that key ring being there um, so I was the, the person thought I'd kicked the machine which I hadn't and I got kicked out and I remember just crying I was on holiday just crying and my mum had to go <laughs> What's the matter? What's happened? I was like, I was kicked out, blah, blah, blah. I was, it was 15. No, I wasn't. I was like eight. <laughs> um, the, I was going to say the irony of, get, of them kicking you out for you kicking the machine, but that seems harsh to me. I don't, but I didn't even do it, don't you? That's the, that's the, that's the obsessing thing. I didn't kick the machine. I wouldn't dream of cheating the 2P system and maybe getting so did a you, pound. Did you win? Did you no, win the game? No, and then, no, okay. no. I, th- I don't. I think you could kick that thing all day long. You'd never make any money. And if you did, again, as Sam's pointing out, you're making two p's. You probably yeah. had to break a pound coin to get the fifty-two p's yeah, you're starting yeah, exactly. with, and you're going to run I, out. You never make. I money. recently sort of. I recently sort of exercised those demons by talking to a, a mutual friend of ours, actually, who used to work in an arcade, and they said that it probably was some sort of power trip. Uh, John, friend of the uh, show, yeah, uh, a power trip to like bully an eight-year-old. Yeah, yeah well, quite, yeah. Uh, so short answer, short answer, no, not really. Uh, PlayStation or Xbox? PlayStation, I've had more consoles of. I was part of the Xbox 360 kind of shift, though, uh, and then switched back to PS4 when uh, when, oh, when those came yeah. around. But I was a big proponent of the Xbox 360. I loved my 360. It made Jamie very I've, happy. I've still got it somewhere, but it... Um, the disk drive broke and it thought it kept ejecting. That happens with all my consoles, weirdly, because it happened with my PS4 as well. Um, mm. Must be to do with the fact that I kick my consoles to try and get discs out of it, maybe. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's all, it's all come full circle. So just, <laughs> Sam did, in fact, kick the 2P machine. Yeah, as soon yeah. as you don't get your way with stuff, you start kicking them. <laughs> just kick, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's, that's the way to sort things out. Uh, but no, I'm pretty much Team PlayStation now, although there's some news that I'm sure you're going to talk about later that has led me to think astray. Oh, well, that's okay. interesting. Okay. That is very interesting. Um, finish the sentence. The Last okay. of Us Part 2 is... Great. Nice. Great game. Um, Great game. 
So uh, for those that don't know, some of your most recent gaming videos on 101 Facts have yep. featured Crash Bandicoot, the yep. Batman Arkham series, yep. Fallout New Vegas, yep. World of Warcraft, and yep. The Last of Us. Uh -huh. Can you list them from uh, your favourite to your least favourite? Oh, man. Okay, so... So, obviously, for that video, for that video recently, I've, I've played through a lot of them again. So Batman Arkham, I'm currently going through again. Uh, and I absolutely love that series. Um, genuinely love. But the thing is, it, it's not like a... The, the Last of Us is one of the only games I consider to be like... Well, obviously, games are art, but like Last of Us seems to transcend the boundary, if that makes sense. Right. So, um, so The Last of Us is one of the best games I've ever played. I just... I, I love it. Crash Bandicoot's a childhood... So I would say Arkham, because I just absolutely love the Arkham games. Then Last of Us. Then uh, Crash. Oh, wait. what? I actually can't even remember what else you said. Oh, uh, Fallout New Vegas, World of Warcraft were the other two. Okay. Well, World of Warcraft, I haven't played that much of, so that's, that's dead last. I'd say Fallout New Vegas is probably above Crash Bandicoot. So Batman Arkham, Last of Us, uh, Fallout New Vegas, then Crash, then World of Warcraft. Uh, but I'm one of those people that thinks that Fallout 3 is better, that, or I prefer it to New Vegas. I would completely agree with you. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. I, I mean, that one... I, I've... sorry, go on, Jay. So, I, I'm sorry, Sam. I think there's enough of a delay that I'm talking over you. That's my bad. But I was going to say that's one that's seemingly changed over the years where it feels like there's this weird revisionist history in the last five or so years that now Fallout New Vegas is the unsung hero of the Fallout series. And <laughs> that's the one that you're meant to, you know, bow down yeah. at the feet of and it, like don't get me wrong it's uh, potentially more interesting from a narrative perspective than fallout 3 but i'm kind of with you that i don't know when that shift happened i thought no, everyone I, loved no, fallout 3 yeah i thought they did too and i remember i remember talking about it uh with with fellow fallout aficionados if you like um <laughs> and they were like no no it's it's like a it, it's like new vegas is the, is the kind of golden child of that of that kind of especially especially yeah. in kind of youtube circles it's very much kind of the online uh, online 100%. the kind of yeah the golden chalice if you like of of those games but i just i think maybe it's because fallout 3 was the first one i played but i kind of am more a certain, like kind of joined to that if you like like one of my favorite gaming moments ever is like it's when you first go into the wasteland of fallout 3 right that was a big moment yes. yeah that was absolutely amazing, yeah. Yeah. Bloody, yeah. bloody fantastic game. Yeah. Okay, f finish this sentence. Google Stadia is... Oh, man, I think... Redundant? Is that a... <laughs> that yeah, if that enough? works. It's that like works. A, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really... I, I haven't really read that much into it, but from what I know of it, it doesn't really seem to be that much of an attractive proposition to me. And surely it can't work th as many well as others they say. as well. Yeah. I actually just remembered I have this as well. Okay. There's a there's a charisma bobblehead for people who aren't watching. Anyway, well, did you see very that? Nice. That is wicked. Yeah, yeah, yeah very cool. Yeah. Um, we but did. Yeah, anyway, so yeah, redundant. I'd say Stadia. Uh, Sonic or Mario? Hmm. Mario. I that's think, it, okay, yeah. I was going to say Sam. That's not that difficult. Come on, you yeah. shouldn't be hesitating I, on that for that. Come long. on. Well, hang on. Give, hang give on. everyone I'm, their own. <laughs> I was more thinking about how many of those, how many of played of each. Uh, but Mario, yeah, Mario. It's so absolutely played, Mario. <laughs> back in the day, I de I played more Sonic back in the day, but um, but I I'd, I'd, I'd go Mario nowadays for sure. People yeah. who said uh, Sonic to that grew up in a broken home. That's what I'm gonna say. I'm laying man, down the, the law. Thing, the thing I always think about with Sonic these days is the is that weird scene where he kisses that human woman. <laughs> Oh, right, yeah. Or how about just all the weird people on Twitter who love Sonic and want him to fuck everyone? Yeah, that. I mean, that that's a, been... that's a you know that's a strange a strange uh, hobby, I guess. Yeah, I guess. So luckily, I, I haven't come across them. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, we we probably shouldn't be surprised by who and what we find on Twitter nowadays in 2020. I guess that's maybe on me for being as taken aback by it as I was. I just never grew up thinking Sonic would be the kind of person people would want to see fuck one day, and. Now they want to see him fuck, I, I, you know, to each their own. I, mean, I, mean, I think yeah. you made a safe assumption, but <laughs> <laughs> apparent, apparently not. Yeah. Um, all right, Sam, so have you pre-ordered a next-gen console? This hurts, man. This hurts. Because I've tried. 
Lord knows I've tried, but no, I haven't been successful in doing so yet. And it's it was breaks, rough. It was breaks, very breaks rough. my heart. It, it was horrible. Yeah, it was it was horrible. Because I remember I remember um, no one had announced that they were taking them like the day afterwards. So I assumed, oh, there'll be like a big announcement. And then I checked it like I, d- I thought I'd do a cursory check at quarter past like quarter past nine or something. I was like, oh, that's it. They're all gone. And then I got yeah. I got an email from from a, well I won't name them I got an email from a company saying um, oh you've you've shown an interest in this so there's a, and it came up with a countdown saying we're selling them in this in this in this time and I and I thought okay I'll click the link when you know when that time is up but apparently the thing to do was to click on it when you got the email which they didn't say so you were in the oh. queue yeah. What? Okay, oh, that that's sucks, fucked. Man. Yeah, that's, that's messed horrendous. up. That's messed yeah, that, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. It is messed up. Um, it is really but, messed up. But yeah, heartbreakingly, no, I haven't. I'm yet to get my uh, mitts on a pre-order. Did, did you guys see that um, that guy who pre-ordered one from Smiths or Smiths or whatever the toy store? Uh, and he oh, yeah. was selling it. He was selling it on eBay for double the price. The pre-order, and as proof, he put up the screenshot of the pre-order, which included the order number. So someone nice annoyed at their, uh, you know, kind of poaching, if you like, called Smith's up and cancelled his order. <laughs> that is genius. <laughs> Pretending to be that. him. Yeah, just said That's I don't cool, want. Eh? I don't want this anymore. So he lost it. Good. Fair play. Outs. Anyway. But no, yeah, I that's no, that's I like that. I like that someone did that. I think that's good. I want people like you and me and Jamie and all of the people watching this who want to actually get them and exactly. play them to be able to get them first. I don't exactly. just want people to make money out of them. I know that um, Jamie has. So the you, final quote. Have, have you? Have you both? Oh, I know sorry, you. I know you have. Uh, I know Jamie has, but Jonesy, did you manage to? I did. I was. I was lucky that I actually okay. missed um, the the online stuff. I was. I was playing Marvel's Avengers the night that the pre-orders went live for the PlayStation Five with Jamie, and he managed to get one. Um, but I actually went down to my local game store in the morning um, and managed to get one there because they Old had fashioned. some stock that. Well, yeah, and it was apparently it was um, they sort of uh, they had in-store stock and online stock, and I, I actually thought like, oh, I wonder if this is a better way to do it. And sure enough, when I got there, um, I think I joined a queue of about 10 people and everyone in that queue got one. Um, wow, that does had, surprise me actually. Oh, they had no digital versions left actually. They had no pre-orders for that, but they had the disc version, which is the one I wanted anyway for the yeah. backwards compatibility with my disc boy PS4 games. <laughs> so um, so yeah, that was all good. Um, so the very last question we have for you in our little uh, little quiz Sam section is, just, just do quick, you have a message for... Oh, just quickly, Sorry, how am I doing, on. Jamie? How am I doing? So far, you're a part. You're passing. I think, if anything, you're moving slightly <laughs> higher in the rankings. I think the key things here are. Do you know what I'm going to say? It. A lot of this came down to the Sonic Mario thing. If you said Sonic, <laughs> yeah, you I, I, thought it might, I, gonna, I was I was ready to abandon you like an unloved child. Just, but you're doing okay. Up. Okay. Yeah, I love that. Bef- I tested the questions out on Jamie to see if he thought they were right. And when I said Google Stadia, is he just said dead, <laughs> which I thought was great. <laughs> I mean, t- clock's ticking, boys. Clock's ticking. Do you know what? And I say that as someone who has a Google Stadia subscription. So there you go. Do you actually? Right. I'm, yeah, not, I'm yeah. not even sure I knew that. Yeah, I what do. you're, pay, you're paying for it. I pay for it. Is it ten pound a month? Whatever I pay. When, oh, when have word. you used it? Uh, I've used it once um, about three or four months ago. What <laughs> <Do you laughs> it was was uh, I was so wed- I was so into the idea of cloud gaming Stadia, and so I felt like I should do it. And then I just haven't got around to cancelling it, so I've just been paying for it. Oh month. man! Like well, hey, my gym membership. So someone has to, right? Wait, Jonesy, yeah. is your gym membership at the gym that we used to go to at a place that we don't go to anymore? Is it that no, gym no, membership? No, okay, it, thank you. No, it's, a, it's a local, it's a local gym which is just around the corner to me. But obviously they were locked down, so I couldn't go. And then I haven't gone back since. Um, um yeah. I th- my I very think- last question then. Oh, question so number yeah, ten. Yeah. Is do you have a message for Chris who is not here this week? Chris, I do. Yeah. Where? Well, well. First of all, is he all right? Is he okay? Or is he just on holiday? He's on holiday. He's all good. Yeah. Could could be dead. I mean, well, I haven't well, had an update for a while. Well, I hope the man. I hope the man's okay, and I hope he's still. Uh, what was that game he used to play all the time? Oh, was it Oxen Free? Is he still? And and <laughs> no, long? no. He, yeah. did, he played it for a. He did a a, a player long. No, no, a live stream, didn't he? With Oxen. Yeah, he no, did. He, you're I, right. He did a let's play very early ATG play. days. He did. Yeah, yeah I, I remember that. Uh, I'm. I'm just hope he's still still Oxen Freeing, and I hope he's still having a 
having a blast on League of Legends. Uh, was it oh. League of Legends he played? It was, right? <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, no. I, I hate to say this, but uh, when Chris listens back to this, the answer to the previous nine questions is completely irrelevant because now that you've... <laughs> oh, even just to man. imply that he plays League of Legends, he doesn't like you anymore. Well, I'll tell you. In fact, <laughs> he's just texted me now, tell Sam he's dead to me. League of okay. Legends can suck a fat dick. His words. Well, fair mine. enough. I mean, I mean, you know that that's that's completely fair. Uh, similar though, aren't they? No, they yeah, are. they're the same fucking yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. But I'll, uh, put, it, yeah. I'll put it this way: whether you play Dota or you play League of Legends, you're still a fucking nerd. There you go. There <laughs> same, it is. same outcome. I was I was about to say as well because I I was about to say that uh, I hope you're still playing that because I see him post about it on Twitter a lot. But obviously that's not true because I would remember what it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, there you well, go. Well, Sam, thank you very much for doing Sam's quick five hey. questions. Well, I think I've learned more about you and I'm always grateful for doing that. Thank so you. That's go. very kind. Uh, so it's time for a little quick catch up, I feel. Um, let's find out what we've been doing in the last week or so. Um, I don't have much to say, actually, this week. I'll go first because yeah. I'm going to keep it brief. And also it will roll into you can tell us more about something which I'm going to mention, Jamie, because you know more about it than me. Um First up, though, I saw Bill and Ted 3 face the music uh, oh. this week. And do you know what? It was really good. Um, it was a nostalgia trip. There was enough in it that um, I, it sort of reminded me of the first two movies. But there was also enough new stuff going on that I found it was it totally fit. And it worked in a trilogy. And I really enjoyed it. And it made me smile. And I definitely want to see it again. So that was a nice surprise. Because sometimes those films miss hard, don't they? Oh, big time. Big time. I'm glad. Well, if it made you smile, that's the main thing, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. To, a bit of that might have been that I haven't been to the cinema for like four months, and I was just happy to be eating popcorn and drinking a frozen <laughs> yeah. cherry drink or whatever. But no, it was pretty good. But the only other thing I've done of any note was to play some Call of Duty, um, Black Ops, Cold War, the Third. Uh, you know, blah blah blah. Many other names. <laughs> a squire. Friggin' game is called. Yeah, the Wire. Because <laughs> um, it was an alpha, so we got to play a bit of the multiplayer and see what that game is about. Uh, and I'm only going to say a quick thing about it because I fell off it pretty hard because I spent about 90 minutes just getting sniped by teenagers, I can only assume, and then gave up. Um, so it pretty, was very COD-like. Pretty standard for Call of Duty, yeah. It is. Uh, Jamie is much more of um, a, a COD multiplayer gamer, and I know he played some as well, so I'm more interested to hear what you thought, Jamie. Well, it, it's funny because I give up a lot on Call of Duty as well because no one likes getting sniped, no one likes getting shit on. So what I did was I wrapped it up in a stream, which uh, I guess for anyone who hasn't experienced that before, it basically gives you a reason to keep playing something that you might not want to play that much. You kind of, sort of strap yourself to the beast, I guess, and you're just there for two hours of it or whatever. It is. And I think you're actually both there to see bits of that. So thank you to you both. Sam I subbed. Did. Haven't forgotten I did. That. Uh, subbed, Shout out yeah. to you. Nice. Doing up to you, Jonesy. Well, you need oh, to do a yeah. bloody live stream first. I need to oh, stream, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jamie, where did you stream that? Just uh, just if anyone... I streamed that on twitch.tv forward slash fullfatjamie. But you can nice. check out my friends at twitch.tv forward slash supershowjonesy or twitch.tv forward slash technoovo or twitch.tv forward slash hotpanic or twitch.tv forward slash Sam hasn't started streaming yet, but he might do one day. He's got a Twitch <laughs> account now. Go. Hey, it might happen. Get ready. Decent. Eventually, we're just going to get to a, a point where our, our family of Twitch friends are so big, you have to say about 19 URLs every time you bring up any <laughs> live stream, and people are just going to get angry. They might already be angry, in which case, I can, let us know in the comments down below. That's engagement. I can fully imagine. You, do you remember when do you remember when uh, Bebo was around and people got upset because you didn't give each other your love? You got you got allocated like a love for the day. Do you remember that? Yeah. Jonesy, do you remember that? Yeah. Oh, I do you know what I missed that I was yeah. never I was I think I was slightly too old for it and then I missed out yeah that's because I was a MySpace kid and stuff yeah. but yeah on yeah, Bebo we, jo Jane will remember you got you had love which you could give one other person every day and I saw genuine friendships break up over people not giving each other each other love and I can imagine that's with Twitch, dangerous isn't it yeah oh yeah. yeah I can imagine with Twitch people not raiding other people enough I can see friendships Ooh. breaking up over that. I think yes, like I any that. kind of gamification of social media goes south quick, right? Because even when yeah. Facebook became the de facto one and that didn't have any kind of, oh, who are your top friends? Who are you going to give love? Blah, blah, blah. It was still kind of like, this guy's only got 300 friends. What a fucking loser. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. Jesus. 
Imagine that being considered a loser for having 300 friends. Like, I'm 27 now, and I think I've got about three friends, and I'm grateful. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say one thing that's the only thing that's still kind of, it doesn't grate on me, it does a little bit, is that whenever I put anything on Facebook, um, I'll get about, or whatever it is, let's say it's something that anyone that anyone I know is going to care about. I'll get, you know, 10 to 20 people will like it, will comment on it or whatever. And I'm like, okay, that's done Numbers. all right. The second my wife comments or says anything or posts anything on that, she will get about 80 people. And I'm like, what's the point? What's yeah. the point? It, it hurts. It hurts. Twi- it Twitter's stuff. the same. Like, you know where, what you can achieve with a good tweet and you know what a bad tweet. What you really have to do is something that I'm not very good at is, but it's... You know, work yourself into a position where you keep going no matter what, where you have something yeah. to say, so you're going to tweet it no matter who likes it. But then I get into this thing where I haven't tweeted in months, so I'm like, well, if I'm going to come back, I've got to come back with a banger, right? Like, <laughs> I've really got to set the world on fire. Yeah. I did I did that the other day. I tweeted about that Prince of Persia remake, and like, luckily no one noticed, but that was my first tweet in like 10 months, and no one said anything, fortunately, but... A bit weird was it really? It. Was it that yeah. long? Wow. Yeah. I went almost a year without tweet. My last tweet was about Death Stranding when it came out. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> and then I was tweeting about Prince. Anyway, Call of Duty. Um, look, I, 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 had a, I had a reasonably good time with it. Uh, again, helped by the fact that I was sort of streaming, so I was distracted by the bits and pieces, and I had a reason to keep going at points where I might have otherwise rage quit. I think I just felt that it was a, a fairly standard... Call of Duty multiplayer experience in a way that maybe even like the standards nowadays and just how much I enjoyed Modern Warfare and Warzone, which I know is something that all three of us have gotten into at various points. It felt a little bit lackluster, maybe. Like I was like, okay, right. this is one of these again, but maybe that's it. And it had a lot of the the Treyarch call marks, uh, not as you know far afield as Black Ops Four was. So it's things like the time to kill is a little bit longer than it was in Modern Warfare. I also just feel like the presentation is a little bit more arcadey. Some of the sort of ultra realistic edge of Modern Warfare has been, uh, you know, taken off. Uh, I didn't have a bad time with it. I just think it feels like a weird prospect at the moment and I need to play it for a little bit longer. But the other thing I'm worried about, and I don't know how you guys feel about this, is like, Sam, are you still on and off with Warzone, for example? On, on and off, yeah. More off at the moment. Because I tend to play it when uh, when other people I know are available to play it, and right. they haven't been recently. I, I guess I'm I'm the same, but I, what I'm worried about is that obviously this is a Call of Duty game that feels different to the ones that Infinity Ward make. So yeah. this is a Call right. of Duty multiplayer game that feels different enough to Warzone that I think if you were dipping in between the two, going back and forth, you'd kind of have a tough time. You'd have to sort of reacclimatize yourself each time you jumped over to the way each one controls and plays and the pacing and the time to kill and the weapon handling and stuff like that. So I'm really curious to see how they try and create those two games in such a way where they can exist independently of each other, but also feed into one another each other, which is what they've said they wanted to do. It, it's it's a mystery at the moment. Well, it's not that much of a mystery. That's an exaggeration. It's, it's, an, it's a curious one at the moment that I haven't really made my mind up yet. But, I, but then again... I'm curious about that campaign, so that's probably still a logical PS5 game to pick up at some point. But do you know what? <sighs> Unless they do some mental shit in terms of stuff you need or want for Warzone that is just tied to that game, I can see myself waiting to the 25th, getting someone else to buy it for me. Shout out to my mum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'm in the same boat as you with that. I, I, I don't know if you felt this, Jamie, but I almost would have... If, um, if I hadn't have played Warzone and you would have put... Uh, Warzone and this um, I mean admittedly it was an alpha side by side and said which is the newer game I wouldn't have been able to easily tell you which was which was which like it almost felt a little dated to me um, uh, Cold War which I wasn't expecting but it is an alpha it's on PlayStation 4 so I I imagine when it comes to PS5 it's going to feel it's going to look a little bit more flashy anyway let's put it that way hopefully hopefully Um, yeah well I guess sorry Sam Oh no no sorry right. I was I was going to say when I when I I got a notification saying that twitch.tv forward slash full fat Jamie was online uh, playing it. <laughs> You're embarrassing me. <laughs> there you go. Uh, well, I I watched it and it doesn't look. Yeah, it just it just doesn't look like it's adding anything different. Yeah, yeah it looks it's more of the same of stuff you've seen in the past, yeah. isn't it? Rather yeah. than sort of changing anything. Yeah, but here's hoping that that campaign is something a bit special because it is um, the campaign and the trailers and things and the cinematics. 
actually did kind of grab me and it made me think this looks like a cool campaign. It looks like a lot of fun. And because they've kind of going back to the um, uh, that sort of time period, I I'm, I'm don't think they've done that time period, like the 80s, uh, sort of mid 80s um, that I can remember sort of very recently. So, you know, it should be, should be fun. It should be cool. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I'm going to keep an eye on it for sure, but I feel like that game kind of has its work cut out, which is weird for a Call of Duty. It also just hasn't helped that they've left everything so late, right? We're still learning about a Call of Duty game in the end of September, um, which I guess feels a little bit odd, but I'm, I'm remaining optimistic where there is room for optimism. But the other thing I played a little bit of, which again, I'm even though I'm actually playing it and it's the final version, the retail version, I also have to remain optimistic because sometimes it makes me want to eat my Nintendo Switch whole. Just take a big old bite out of it. <laughs> in um, a good way or in a bad way? In an angry way. I'll be oh, honest with you, Jonesy. In an angry way. And that's Super Mario 3D All-Stars, which is the compilation game, I guess, of Super Mario 64, Super can Mario I, can Sunshine. I, can I just... Yeah. Can I, sorry, can I interrupt to say, I think if you really tried, Jamie, I believe that you could buy a Nintendo Switch in half. Do you think I'm, I'm like fucking up. Jaws from James Bond or something? I'm just going to take a big chomp out of it. I th- Sam, I think what do you the, think? Do I have- that's, the, that's the next logical conclusion to the whole thing of, uh, do you remember when people were like, oh, you can taste the cartridges. Taste the cartridge while oh, you've it you've made a very good the- point there. There you go. You've made uh, a very good point. Up. So no, I think, I think, I think you'd give it, I'll tell you what, I think you'd give it a damn good go. <laughs> whether I, or not, I love that there you go but I don't think maybe very not very diplomatic oh because also I think I because it it depends if the switch is yours if it isn't yours I think maybe you would be able to but because it is yours Jonesy are you doing anything with your switch at the moment uh, I could I maybe borrow <laughs> yours for a couple of weeks and go run some hey, experiments stretch goal if we get to you know a certain place then we'll buy Jamie a switch you know what? just so he can try and bite through uh, it. yeah we could we could actually make that promise because Patreon's a funny enough platform we could say if we hit a certain mark we will just spend all that money on a switch that I try to bite but then what if Rude. I fuck up my teeth or my jaw or something yeah I was going to say yes, I'm, I'm looking forward to the uh, looking forward to the Patreon post if you with a thumbs up on a hospital bed no, <laughs> no, no it's like left. we're introducing a new stretch goal which allows us to get dental insurance <laughs> yeah sorry I've completely derailed you talking about uh, no do, do you know what I'm, I'm glad I'm, if anything there was if there was worth derailing for anything it was a conversation about whether or not I could actually take a bite <laughs> out of a Nintendo <laughs> Switch um, Super Mario 3D All Stars which uh, again Jonesy and I were on that podcast a couple of weeks ago just after they announced that so I have started with going in sort of order of release, Super Mario 64, which obviously it's the oldest one. And for anyone who hasn't kept up to date with what exactly Nintendo have done to these things, these games, the answer is not a whole lot. Resolution, you know, improvements and a few other things here and there, but they play almost identically, especially when it comes to the camera. Um, Turns out the camera on a 3D Mario game from the late 90s designed to be played on a controller with one analog stick that was in the middle of the controller. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Occasionally, occasionally, decides to be a bit of a dick. Um, And that led to me getting angry a couple of times. I was just like, there's no fucking point in doing this. But I'm, (laughs) I'm, I'm still getting some nostalgia. It's interesting. Sam, you know you were saying earlier about that Rugrats game and reading something in a little book that came with a magazine and there being a hint of something secret and just that sort of feeling of wonder you got, that excitement of yeah. being able to stumble upon something that you didn't know was there. Super Mario 64 was a big one of those for me where for whatever reason that I played that game almost almost in a vacuum. Like I didn't have friends telling me what to do. I didn't know where the secret stars were. I wasn't reading magazines or guides. I didn't have cheats. That was one of those games where I came across everything naturally and that is a game with secrets. And so it's kind of interesting going back to that game for the first time properly since then and remembering, not re-experiencing, but recalling some of that childlike wonder of like, wow, I used to figure shit out by myself because there was a time where, although children are often painted as these kind of impatient little monsters, I did bang my head against a wall in video game terms for eight hours straight to figure shit out, you know, to, to get through a stage I didn't know how to get through. And that's kind of exciting, and it, it made me a little bit depressed that nowadays my first thing is right. I'm just going to Google where the red eight, the red coins are. I don't want can't be, but I can't find the eighth one. I'm just going to Google it. Whereas, like as a child, I used to work to find stuff, and that led to more discoveries. And maybe that's why some people thought Breath of the Wild was 
one of the most magnificent games of all time and I thought it was a good game. I don't know. Not to sound too, like, doom and gloom about it, but it was a bit like, oh, Nintendo games used to have a really profound effect on me in my childhood and now I'm a little bit more cynical and impatient with them. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's funny that to me there's an entire generation out there who who have never experienced the idea of you get to a point in the game and you um, you get stuck and you there's nothing you can do. Like, unless you, one of your friends has played it and solved it, you, you know, you're out of luck. Yeah, exactly. You can't just go online. Yeah, yeah. it was a weird time. But, um, I still but that's it, it for me. So, um, Sam, have you played um, Have you played the Super Mario 3D All-Stars games? Not necessarily the new oh. one, but have you played the original the games? That, what, what games is it? Sorry, Jamie, just quickly. What, 64 what are... Sunshine Galaxy 1. Have you so played, any, played them? I've played 64, but weirdly not on a 64. I played it on a DS. Oh wow! I never had it. Okay. I never. I never had a sixty-four. I didn't have one when I was a kid. Right. Uh, so uh, yeah. So I've only. I've only played sixty-four, and I've played that not on its original console. No, I've never played Sunshine or Galaxy. At all. Well, you are doing better than me because I have not played any of those. Really? Games. That, that surprised um, me. No. Well, do you know what it was? Like, I, I bought a Nintendo 64 really late because um, I was a PlayStation kid, um, and I only got a 64 to play GoldenEye. Um, I used to play GoldenEye at mates' houses, and I had a weird thing. We've talked about it before on the podcast in that I fell off what I considered to be, like, quite kiddie games, um, like, early in my teen years because I thought, oh, they're, they're for kids, and mm. I had moved on to what I considered, I guess. I thought they were more like adult games, um, and I was being cool because I wasn't playing, like, Mario and stuff but it means that I've actually missed out on quite a few of the games that I know Jamie and Chris and stuff have played like the yeah. Mario games and a lot of those so I might have to go back and sort of um, revisit but it's interesting Jamie you were saying that maybe um, maybe it's one that uh, I don't revisit is Mario 64 don't see, like, honestly I'm not even joking when I say I thought of you during my time with 3D All-Stars because I thought Jonesy can be quite cynical when it comes to yes games <laughs> that people are nostalgic about especially if they're Nintendo games and if he went and played this now, he would just be like, why are people talking about this game? It's the worst game of all time. The camera is dog shit. It doesn't matter when it came out. The camera is... The- That's exactly what Josie sounds like, by the way. I know... I actually gotta- that. Yeah, I- yeah, I've been working on it sort of off the show, just in, in my in my free time. But then I try not to bring it out too often because obviously this is an audio product as well and I don't want people to get too confused. Oh, they won't get too confused, Jamie. Uh, Josie, they might do, see? And just then... Like oh, what? Man, thousands was... of people just completely lost the plot. Yeah, they thought that was me. the man. Yeah. The man of a thousand so voices. Yeah, I can do you as well, Sam, if you'd like. Well, I bet. No. Oh, okay. Well, steady on. Hey, okay. steady. No, well, uh, I, mean, well I mean, I mean, I mean, I love Marvel. How was that? <laughs> Whoa! That was that was, that, that was like uh, that was like a parallel universe. Me, it was hot, it was mad. Mm, mm, there you go. Just food for thought. If ever there I need go. to. Uh, Call up a game store pretending to be you to cancel one of your pre-orders. Oh, I can do it. Don't even. Oh, don't even. I'm just putting well, that out there. If I mean, one facts ever need a new presenter, yeah. <laughs> got, uh, go I, I mean, I've got, I've got, I've got my own Alex Jones in the repertoire. Oh, come okay. on, Len. Oh, don't, don't, don't keep it yourself. Don't keep it yourself. Um, hang on. Hi, I'm Alex Jones. There you go. That's it. Th- yeah, that's not bad. That's my VO voice. Yeah, yeah exactly. Pretty, I no, you're not your normal down. voice. I can't do your normal. That, that's your. That's, that's like, certainly your VO. That's all time Alex is. voice right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all time yeah. numbers. Yeah, that yeah, is it. There that you is go. it to a T. Um, yeah, but that'd be interesting though for, for someone who hasn't played or doesn't have the nostalgia glasses of Mario sixty four to play three D All Stars and see if they yeah. feel any attachment. Do you know what? I was so close to buying it as well because it's. It's one of those, I, I think everyone who's got a Switch is in the same position that you want more content and you want more first-party content and you especially want more Mario content. Yeah. Like Odyssey, I, re- I actually really enjoyed Odyssey. I thought it was a very good Mario game. I had a great time with it. I enjoyed Odyssey a lot more than I enjoyed Breath of the Wild um, that year. I thought it was, uh, I didn't even finish Breath of the Wild, but I did finish Odyssey. But I was I was torn with maybe the price of 3D All-Stars because it's a full price game, even though you get three games in it. But I was kind of like, I'd rather it they, that you could buy each one of those titles individually and then maybe, I mean, of course, not something they're going to probably do, but that would have been nice. So I'm sort of, I was trying to decide whether or not it's like I want to do. Yeah. And then 
having heard what Jamie just said, I think maybe I will give it a pass. But we'll, we'll but it's one see. of those weird situations where normally you'd say, hey, I know it's a Nintendo title, but maybe it goes on sale at some point. But as Sam and I were discussing prior to us starting recording, it's going to be off sale in March. Like, this game's yeah. temporary. What the fuck? Oh, it's, it's madness, isn't nuts. it? It's temporary. It's nuts. I reckon they, they, they might do the thing, though, where they do cut it up and sell the individual ones. Maybe. I, um, hope, I would like it if they did that. That would work for me. Two, I'll tell you what, two games that I did play this week, actually, that I'm going to mention really quickly because we're talking about it, was Super Mario Brothers and uh, Donkey Kong. Oh, wow. Weird. So what, 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 what inspired that decision? Um, because I just took a picture actually. So I had this great idea that my, my eldest is now four years old. And I was like, right, he's not getting involved with like GTA now or any new games. Yeah. I'm going to slowly introduce him to the switch, but I don't want to do it in an expensive fashion. And you can get, um, Super Mario Bros is, I think it's like five quid or something. And Donkey Kong is really cheap. So I thought I'll get those games. He can play it on the little controller. It's, it's pretty straightforward. It's 2D. He hasn't got to worry about a camera. It makes sense to me. And he actually did play it for all of one and a half minutes. And then he was like, no thanks. And he went back on the iPad and played um, some more iPad games that he loves playing. So there you go. Wow. What a damning indictment wow. of the classics of gaming. Yep. Ouch. It hurt. It hurt me inside. I'm not going to lie. See, that makes me think that if Sam and I, for example, ever get an opportunity in our future to approach a similar thing we ha you almost have to put them on the old shit before they know about you, the new shit 100%, you, you have 100%. to give them super mario bros before they know what an ipad is you know well you but the stuff he plays on the ipad is rubbish anyway so i thought he'd appreciate some um some good old-fashioned nintendo but, but i think it's yeah but does it but does it yeah. look does it look tech does it look technically rubbish or is no it no you're right it yeah. looks it looks much better yeah because um, that's the uh, that's the thing play very well yeah, that's the thing that they'll yeah. be like. Well, this looks better, so it is better. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like, no, you're abs you're absolutely right. That's the thing is that they at that age, especially, they don't have the how how is the playability? How does this game work? What am I actually doing? What are the mechanics? Yeah. Like they just see shiny and they go, oh, this game's great. He plays, so he loves those games where you slide the pin out and like the water falls oh, on the thing those, and you yeah. move the thing over here. Like he 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 actually. <laughs> This is terrible. I probably shouldn't admit this. He's played a thousand levels of um, one of those games. Oh my Oof. word! Yeah. He's had it. He had it for about four months, and every now and then he'd he'd be like, he'd go going from play school, preschool, whatever, and just have a bit of downtime for half an hour, and he'd play it. But he'd just play it for half an hour, and then the next day play it for half an hour. And after like three, three or four months, yeah, I looked, and he'd played a thousand <laughs> levels. When when do they get a PS4 or something like that, or a Switch? Sorry, Jamie. Say when, when do they get a PS4 or a Switch or get privileges with your PS4? When does Fortnite happen? Um, anything with shooting, I would wait until they're older. But all the old, like any sort of fun platformers, I'd be uh, like if they wanted to now, or like if he wanted to now, I'd let him play it. But he's he's not that keen. He likes his he's he's like that kid who sees anything that's a screen and touches it because he thinks it's touch screen. And anything that's not... It's like Back to the Future. It's you have to use your hands. It's like a baby's toy. He's that kid. He's... Um, uh, who was that? Elijah Wood, or was it? From Back to the Future. I'll yeah, I think it is Elijah Wood. One of those. Yeah, Elijah... It is Elijah Wood, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So he's that. He's like, it's not touchscreen. Ugh, how old. And he's... yeah. That's he's fucked out. up, man. That so, makes me feel old. Yes. Yeah, me too. That's, the, um, that's not that surprising, then, that he didn't like Super Mario Bros, etc. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not surprising <laughs> at all. Yeah. Um, so, Jamo, what did you do anything else this week? Uh, that was pretty much it for me. I, I'm back back on the old workhorse again, so my time is about to get sucked up away from me. The floor slowly disappearing beneath my very feet, so I'm just enjoying whatever gaming I've got left. Played a lot of Warzone, but no one needs to hear more about that anymore because Warzone's Warzone, baby. Um, I know, Sam, you've been playing some stuff this week, and one of the things leads on to a news item it that does. we'll go into later, but why, why, don't you, um, why don't you fill us in? Well, so I've been playing... Uh, so I've been playing the Batman Arkham stuff on PS Now, but also I've been... So I've made a decision that has genuinely got the capacity to ruin my life, which was I re-downloaded <laughs> something that I deleted eight years... Seven years ago because it was going to disrupt my university work, I've re-downloaded The Simpsons Tapped Out, and it is a terrible decision. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow, the mobile yeah. game? Yeah. Oh, Jeez. my word. I know. I know. 
I woke up. So so I woke up at like um, four o'clock in the morning the other day. Just kind of woke up, and you know I wanted to go back to sleep. Set sleep an alarm again. so that you could. Uh, no, no, but then but that's the thing because then I was like, oh, I can set them to do more jobs while I have this nap. I go back to sleep even. And yeah, Dangerous. that's a slippery that's a slippery slope, friends. But the uh, thing you want me to get onto was I tried out Among Us yesterday. How did you find it? Did oh, you, I was. Uh, I mean, fun? I, how did you enjoy it? I was playing it on my phone, and oh, I was terrible at it. I mean, like my first my first match ever, I was the imposter, and oh, um, and that's I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. So I ran like I was literally in front of someone and went in the vent. And they all went, they all oh, pressed the, they all pressed the, the button and were like, oh, it's here, but I saw him go in the vent. And I didn't know that was something you shouldn't do. So I was like, ah. Right. So we, so on, because I haven't played it on mobile, I played it briefly on PC. So I'm guessing that it's all text-based when you get into the, um, when you, someone pushes the button, I guess it's all text-based yeah. to say like who you think the imposter is. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. Because obviously what the, people have been doing... Because what people have been doing now is they've been using Discord, I guess, to actually chat so they can have voice chat in the game, which in between levels, which is, I suppose, adds an entirely new element to it. But you yeah. have any plans to play it like that? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I mean, uh, I don't know if it's available. Is it available on, on consoles and stuff? Or is it just PC? I think it's just PC and mobile, I think. Okay. Well, maybe. Uh, maybe. Who knows? I mean, hopefully... Someone will have heard my cry out for help for a PC on this podcast and send me one. That's how it works, <laughs> right, gang? <laughs> Absolutely, well, yeah. You, well, you can get. Yeah. I, I'm wondering. So I'm wondering because you get the Discord app obviously on the phone. So I'm wondering if um if if one of your favourite gaming channels were to have a uh, oh uh, a live stream where they they featured oh. it and did a Discord chat, then you could you could, could join in and chat away. That could work. That could that could happen. And you could try and hear if I'm lying or just see if I jump an event. Uh, but I, yeah, I, I, I mean, we were we were talking about it before, actually. So maybe you're about to say it. But I thought I thought this game was brand new. You know, came out around the time of Fall Guys, kind of thing. But it's not, is it? No. It, so Among Us, I think, as we were discussing before, we're kind of jumping ahead a little bit. But it, 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 Among oh. Us came out in 2018. No, no, no. I don't mean that bad way, Sam. Don't worry. Okay. This is what you call free form, <laughs> fluid podcasting. Yeah, you just go with the jazz. flow, wherever the flow may take you. It's just like jazz. Um, so it came out two years ago, I believe. Over two years ago. Maybe even two and a half years ago by this point. Or three. I, I don't fucking know. Basically, it came out a long time ago. I think it was developed by three people. And for a very long time was not popular at all. What I'm led to believe it is actually it grew in popularity earlier this year in some non-English speaking countries like South Korea until some streamer, at least, at least according to Wikipedia, a streamer called Soda Poppin is sort of the person who's been pinned as the, the guy who kind of brought it to a new audience, played it on Twitch. And as we, as we kind of hinted at, it's taken over. The numbers are crazy, but also just anecdotally, this is one of the few times where like people are coming onto our Twitch or, or on the in the YouTube comments being like, when are you guys gonna play this? When are you gonna live stream that? Are you gonna do this? I had we had Steph earlier trying to like rally the troops. And I'm I'm intrigued to try it with people I know under very specific circumstances. Yeah. But as a game, it's one of those things I'm just gonna have to say here how I feel here, even if it's controversial. I think it's a very cool concept. But of course it's a cool concept because it's a concept that's been worked into a bunch of different games, not just video games, but also games, people, playing groups over the years. We've all done some version of this in our lives because of, like, it's just, it's a human game. It's about reading people. It's about lying to people. It's about all that kind of stuff. I just think what they've done to wrap around it totally suffices for a three pound game that you might play every now and then. I didn't think it had it in it to be the next big video game revolution. And I feel like every live stream I watch of this game is the same fucking thing. It's the same people running around the same map or two maps or three maps doing the same tasks. And then, but most frustrating of all, having the same conversations. Try watching right. any live stream of this game with Ninja in it. And you're just listening to for annoyed white kids shouting for hours <laughs> on end and then silence. So it's like annoyed people shouting over each other for a minute, three minutes of silence. People shouting over each other. And I, I can't imagine playing that on my own. Well, like, oh, we're in the game again now. I'm just going to mute myself for the next three minutes while all my friends are sat on the other end of a Discord call also not talking to me while we run around. <laughs> I don't know. It, it doesn't compute with my brain. I know I'm not seeing it the right way, but I'm just being honest. I'm sorry. 
it's one that I, I've I, so I played it a little bit with random people, and obviously there was no voice chat. But I'm kind of with you, Jamie, in that I would like to experience it with with people I know and do the voice chat thing. But playing it as a game in its own right, I found it pretty dry. And I and Jaws, I had a similar to you, Sam, in that I wasn't imposter the first time I played it. Um, but I think it was the third match I played. I was the imposter, and there were two of us two imposters and I wasn't really sure what I was doing yet so I didn't do anything nefarious I just was uh trying to sort of gauge when I was going to try and take someone out when I was going to do whatever and the other guy who was the imposter killed someone and I got called out for it and I hadn't done anything and then I got ejected and it was like no they found an imposter I was like but why I didn't do anything and um yeah Yeah, there was loads of after I got kicked out there was a there was loads of messages saying good game lol and all this Fantastic yeah, nonsense, weird, and I was like, so, yeah. weird. I just started, lads. <laughs> and like the situation Jonesy found himself in, I think that could be fun if it was like, for the sake of argument, for people we know, if it was Chris accusing Jonesy of being the imposter and Jonesy having to be like, no, it's not me. Being there, knowing those yeah. people, yeah. I'm sure I'd be having a laugh. But yes, I don't know. I'm, a, I'm just, I guess, I'm somewhat surprised at how much this game has increased in popularity due to streaming and YouTube clips of it, when I find other annoying people arguing with each other, unsurprisingly annoying. I'm sure there are people who are, yeah. whose perspectives it's fine to watch it from, but that 50,000 people stay up every night watching Ninja play this game, and he just screams and talks over people, it's not for me. I don't even think he's a bad guy. I just think sometimes get watch me play Overcooked, right? Games bring out sides of us that we might not know we have and i think that game does this for certain people I, and they kind of yeah i don't know still remember watching you two play overcooked and it was it's glorious absolutely glorious to see jamie get his full chef on it was great turn he turns into gordon ramsay is perfect yeah well lads <laughs> it's survival of the fittest right this is what evolution has led us to when a group <laughs> are put in a do-or-die situation, the alpha male has to step up and lead from the front. (laughs) See, people often make the mistake when they watch the regular Super Show, when Chris is here, they think that I might be sort of, I'm not the alpha, that I'm the guy that kind of slips in the back, I'm the column commentator. What they don't know is that in the do-or-die, in a life-or-death situation, when shit is on the line, on a computer game, (laughs) I become the alpha and the omega. You do, mate. I, I'm not going to even argue with you. That's absolutely true. I mean, I, I'm keen to see what happens if we actually find ourselves in a desert island. I don't think it'll be quite the same, but... I'd be sitting on a be giant under throne a tree of... Eating I'd a be coconut. sitting on a throne of, yeah, palm leaves telling you guys what to do. Like, Steph, this water's still salty. You need to purify it better. Now, you wouldn't see Steph. <laughs> Steph would do the way he does in games. He'd just disappear and wouldn't tell anyone he was going. And then yeah, and you'd see him in heaven. You're like, Steph, what happened? Oh, I died. I died. <laughs> I, did, I died. I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm dead. I died. Why do you say something? Oh, I don't know. I just died. Anyway, uh, I think we should move on to some news because um, we haven't talked about any news yet. Well, actually, we kind of have because we kind of uh, we've led with our Among Us story, um, which was going to be later. But there has been some interesting developments this week because Microsoft bought Zenimax Media, which is the parent company um, of Bethesda, which is I don't think many people saw coming. Um, I hadn't heard any mentioning about it, and I am usually the last person to know. But anyway, I you know I would have thought I would have heard something, um, which actually caught in a, in a seven and a half billion dollar deal uh, is is pretty epic, especially with some of the games that they've now sort of lined themselves up, some of the franchises that they've got hold of, because they've got Doom, Elder Scrolls, Dishonored, Wolfenstein, Fallout, Quake, Prey, Rage, The Evil Within, and Starfield. Um, that are all now going to release, any future ones are going to release under a Microsoft banner, which is kind of big, guys. It's kind of epic, isn't it? Big, like, big to the degree that when I went on Twitter after this happened, I think I, it was maybe an hour after the news dropped, and started to see tweets and started to piece things together, my first reaction was, I've misunderstood these headlines because this cannot be <laughs> yeah. what's happening. My first reaction was like, this is too big, this is too significant. Uh, but then it turned out to be true, and... This is, look, I don't mean to get excited, but we're all nerds at the end of the day, so maybe it's allowed. This was just, this was one of those things that ground my day to a halt. This is one of those pieces of news where I was flabbergasted. I just couldn't believe what was going on. This is, people know I don't even have an allegiance to a console. I'm purely, as a completely, you know, agnostic 
neutral person looking on in this scenario, I was completely blown away at what happened, at what's involved, at the numbers, and, and sort of what this could mean. I, wow, like, wow. Cause, so let's get into the numbers a little bit. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Sam, I'd love to get your take on it. Because so but, so in buying Zenimax, they've they've effectively bought, so the whole of Bethesda, which includes Bethesda Softworks and Bethesda Game Studios, they've got id Software, Arcane Studios, Machine Games, Tango Game Walk, Gameworks, and more. So we're talking 2,300 employees worldwide. Um, not to mention the fact that this makes it one of the biggest video game acquisitions of all time, which is pretty epic. Um, I think, Jay, so Jamie, you actually did a bit of research for this and you were saying that it's twice the price of Star Wars that they've paid for this. Yeah, it's around, I think Star Wars, Disney paid in, like, Sam, you might even know the exact number. Was it in the three or four billion range? Yeah, it was. Four billion? Yeah, it was, it was around, I think it was three and a half, if I remember correctly. So that's literally yeah. half, I think. So when you, and it's three times the price of um, the purchase of Mojang uh, or Mojang, however you want to say it, and Minecraft. Um, so I think the question here is, so Sam, would you, do you think from what you've heard of this initially, knowing how big this is, do you think it's, does it sound worth the price? I'm going to put you on the hot seat. Is that, is that too much they've Absol- paid? Hey, no, you, you light that fire up under that chair. The, <laughs> that was very partridge. I didn't mean it to be. Um, I would say, I mean, yeah, it, two of the, you know, Fallout and Elder Scrolls are two of the biggest, like, synonymous with gaming. Like, they're two of the biggest franchises within the whole gaming kind of stratosphere, if you like. It's it, the the thought of those two being even timed exclusives is ma- It's just insane to comprehend. Like, I yeah, I was the same as you. I was the same as you, Jay. When I went on Twitter, I thought I was like, what? No, well, I read it. Yeah. I was like, oh, and. Kept going through, and I was like, "No, hang on, hang on, hang on." Whoa, whoa, whoa. And it's, it, yeah, I, I, would, I would say it's. It depends what they do with it, but it's definitely, it's definitely worth doing. Um, Fallout, uh, Fallout, and Elder Scrolls. Even just in the, even not thinking about Elder Scrolls Online or Fallout seventy six. Even thinking about just their single player efforts are huge games. They, they are yeah. like. Day one purchases for a lot of people. So the fact that they're going to be on Game Pass immediately, I think, is that right? Have I got that right? Yeah. It's that seems yeah. to be the implication. Yeah, that is yeah. that is ma- that's massive for, uh, for 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 Microsoft. So I would say I would say it is, um, and it also means that you know anything new, because anything they, anything new they make, you know Bethesda. You know we joke about Bethesda with them being all buggy and glitchy, etc. Um, and you know that that's warranted, uh, but you know when you see the Bethesda logo on something, you normally think, well, before seventy six, you normally think, you know, this is a sign. This is going to be, this has the capacity to be great, right? Um, it's not. It's not quite for, in my mind. You know, anything with Naughty Dog or Rockstar in it is 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 the highest level of that. It's not quite the highest level of that for me. But um, you know, you normally think it's, you're, it's you're definitely a, up there, isn't it? Definitely, it's definitely, definitely. Up there for sure. So, so like, I think, I think, yeah, it's a, it's an it's an insanely powerful, you know, BDE move for Microsoft to um, uh, to yeah. do that. And as a as a PlayStation, you know, I'm very firmly within the PlayStation family. It's made me worried. It's made me concerned that you know, I I love the. Um, I love the well. I love Skyrim. I've never played Oblivion, but um, and I love the Fallout games. And it's made me the thought of not having them on PS Five has made me. It's, it's given me itchy feet. Uh, not enough for me to jump fully over, but certainly to consider getting a digital only version so I can get the Game Pass to then play those games. There we go. It's massive. That, it's massive. That's, that's it's funny. That's exactly one of the conversations we were having on WhatsApp midweek, which is that. We've literally gone within the course of seven days from speculating about who the Xbox Series S could potentially be for to all of a sudden now having a really fascinating yeah. use case for the Xbox Series S for people who say, I'm still console only. I'm not building a fucking PC. I need the cheapest Xbox I can get to play Fallout, to play Starfield, to play Elder Scrolls, and whatever else fucking comes out of this deal. Because as like when Jonesy was running it down, it's a lot of studios. I don't know where they're at in development and stuff like that. I think one thing that we have had confirmed is that the two 
soon to come out Bethesda games, Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo, which were both already announced as PlayStation 5 time exclusives, are going to remain so. So we could be looking at 2022 or late 2021 before anything even comes out of this $7.5 billion deal. But the implications are potentially massive. And like you mentioned in I game, that, that, sorry, just, that just bears just repeating in case some people missed it in that Microsoft right now are <laughs> going to be releasing some PlayStation timed exclusive. Yeah. Microsoft, on the are, PlayStation Microsoft are putting out PlayStation exclusive games. That's and fucking I, yeah. brilliant. I think they're being, they're being very clever by saying um, in terms of exclusivity saying, Oh, it's on a case by case basis. I think that's a clever move for them at the beginning of a new console generation uh, to say yeah. that because I do wonder though if if they do that and say oh it's by case by case basis and then it turns out that stuff like Elder Scrolls Starfield etc then isn't exclusive to just Xbox I wonder if people feel cheated by that it um could do, I, I suppose in some sense though they they're almost protected by the fact that even if they're not exclusive to the Xbox they know they're going to be able to play them because you know yeah. that if Sony acquired those the Bethesda, they would make them Sony exclusives. Yeah. yeah. So I guess in some respects, it's you know hopefully there'll be across more platforms. I, I think Microsoft, as you just kind of alluded to, Jonesy, would be well within their right to say, "Fuck you, we've paid seven point five billion dollars yeah, yeah. for these games. We're doing whatever the fuck we want with them." But at the same time, maybe there is a kind of a savvy business element to say no these games are going to be on game pass only for a full year and then hey if playstation suckers want to pay 70 dollars per copy then let them i don't know think i don't think they will do that but that's an interesting one uh, but i think game pass is the main draw i think it's no coincidence that the other element that came out alongside this piece of news in the exact same press uh, release in fact was an update on the game pass subscriber numbers which have gone up 50% in five months from 10 million to 15 million. Um, if that ramping up increases, you know, we could be talking about 20 million people by early 2021. And then God knows how many by the time there's a game the size of Elder Scrolls that's exclusively on Xbox platforms and PC and available day one through Game Pass. Like we could be talking about, you know, that it's it's the real kick up the ass we talked last week even without this knowledge about how xbox going the services route could be the trump card and now this is just like now they've got even more cards up their sleeves like this is cra- it's kind of crazy um i'm fascinated by it you know, i saw, I saw it some people obvious. i saw some uh rumblings online of people saying that oh they wouldn't do that because it's a it's a pre-established kind of cross-generational thing i'm talking about elder shows and all out again here Mm. But as you said, they've just paid seven point five billion dollars for them. So, oh yeah, they would want. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it makes sense for them for them to do that. As much as that terrifies me to even consider. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I think it's a I think it's a huge boon for them. I mean, I think at this point we might as well just um, dub the Xbox Series S the. Uh... Bethesda machine because I think that's I think you're right I think that is what it will become for a lot a lot of people um and that I mean let's not let's not get it twisted like Elder Scrolls when that comes out I guess it's Elder Scrolls 6 right um yeah I can never remember where they're at with like naming stuff yeah like but you're going to want to be able to play that and like you said if you're not going to want to get a PC then that's going to be the best way for you to get hold of that which is a definite problem I mean I might even consider it at that point, if I didn't yeah. have, what well, I would if I didn't already have a PC Plus, that was. Um, I, I was thinking about this the other day, not even just in terms of Bethesda, but in terms of things like Halo Infinite and Fable and stuff like that. I'm a big Fable guy, as a lot of people know, and I'm probably not going to buy an Xbox. But the other thing we need to think about when we're talking about games that come out in the future, as I think Elder Scrolls and Star Field both will, Elder Scrolls definitely, is the landscape of gaming might be completely different. Elder Scrolls 6, and like cover your ears if you're anticipating this game, that could be comfortably be a 2025 release. Comfortably, yeah. if not later. By then, fuck knows where xCloud is. You might not right. need a PC, you might not need an Xbox Series S, you might just need a mobile phone or a browser and your subscription. And in which case, the barriers to entry become so low that of course people are going to fucking sign up for Game Pass because all you need is an account and like loads of other streaming services have had like with Google's one that they when they were testing Stadia before it came out there was the they were doing loads of stuff in browsers all you needed was Google Chrome with an account and you could play right. Assassin's Creed we could easily be there in five years time and that's how far away a game like Elder Scrolls 6 could be 
if not if not further. Again, sorry to burst that bubble for anyone, but Starfield and Elder Scrolls are a long fucking way away. Yeah, no, it's a great point. I mean, um, there, there was a slight weirdness to it for me, which was that um, if this was a number of years ago, then this would seem like a, an, obs- an you know an absolutely obvious deal. If you were looking at the back of things like Skyrim, uh, Fallout Four, um, which I mean didn't do incredible incredible in how it was received, but did very well in the sense of how it sold and everything. Um, talking about Doom twenty sixteen, but. Bethesda in a little bit of a strange place in that they've had some rocky years between now and then. So um, you wonder if this is, you know, I suppose the promise of Bethesda as opposed to maybe their recent track record. Personally, I think it's 100% that. I don't know if Sam agrees, but I think this is all about putting Fallout 76 and some of the underperforming games, like there were obviously rumours that things like Prey and the Reefs and Wolfensteins and so on have underperformed. You've got to put that stuff to bed. You've got to give them the time to stretch their legs a bit. You've got to let them work on that tech, which let's let's not fucking forget. Fallout 76 was the ropiest game that Bethesda Softworks or whatever one of them actually technically made it have put out, maybe ever, and it was running on the same console and the same tech and the same engine as Fallout 4, which had already released on the same set of platforms now we're talking about another generational jump another jump in expectations from gamers when it comes to ray tracing and visual fidelity and frame rates and so on and so forth it's this weird thing where bethesda are biding their time but the longer they wait the more people's expectations grow and the more impressive a fallout 5 or an Elder Scrolls 6 or a starfield has to be and i think getting Microsoft money and Microsoft patience in to help you along that journey is probably exactly what they needed. Otherwise, maybe they would be swaying. Yeah, I, I, no, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think... Oh, sorry. Sorry, Jonesy. No, no, go, go, go. Yeah, I was, I gonna, was just I was, agreeing. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I was going to say, and I think from a... Well, as we said earlier, Fallout 76 wasn't exactly received the most warmly. Um, but I think from a PR point of view... Um, they can say it is literally drawing a line under it and saying, right, okay, this is a new, this is a new thing. But it's, it's as you say, Jamie, the longer they wait, the more they have to impress because yeah. it, they can't go doing the same thing with releasing games that are buggy that need um, patches, like day one, huge day one patches, because people now think, okay, you've got the power of one of, if not the biggest company in the world behind you now. And you need to utilize that to to impress us after what you've kind of done before. Um, yeah, and you, you know, it's funny, Sam. You reminded me of something that I heard this week, and actually, I think you nailed it. Is that when people say like um, something's under new management, when they're like, "This hasn't performed," we now yeah. want to say, "Hey, it's been bought by someone else." You'll see better in the future, and then you go, "It's under new management." So I wonder if they'll almost push a bit of that. Bethesda under new management, like expect a lot better in the future. Well, yeah. Here's a, here's a funny thing to think about, right? Is that who else do Microsoft already own and who are already releasing first-party RPGs under the Microsoft banner is fucking Obsidian. What was the last game yeah. Obsidian put out? The Outer Worlds, which, despite you know its comparatively smaller scale, a lot of people praised as the Fallout and Bethesda-style RPG mechanics done right. Done at a scale in which, like, yeah, the, the story didn't outstay its welcome and they could control the bugs because, you know, slighter environments are more, a slightly narrower focus all benefited that game. What are Obsidian working on next? They're working on Avowed, the game we saw the CG trailer for a couple of months ago, which is meant to be Obsidian's big AAA pie in the sky Skyrim killer. So now we've got Bethesda making an actual <laughs> Elder Scrolls game against Obsidian who are also kind of making an Elder Scrolls game in a time where Obsidian might arguably have the better track record in that genre at the moment. So that puts even more pressure, in my opinion, on Bethesda to really use this muscle to you know, get firing on all cylinders and prove that they are the company that people still remember them as thanks to the gargantuan hits like Skyrim and Fallout 3 and Oblivion and so on and so forth. And also, I'm just going to put it out there now, but uh, please make a really good Wolfenstein 3 that continues the story of BJ Blazkowicz and reveals the fate of Hitler in a way that we can actually see it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> for coming, just... Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. But what you say like then they've now got to prove themselves, but then of course that also means that they can they can work with them, they can work with these people again. So there's um, I think it was 
was it um, John Karamak who came out and said, you know, he's pretty psyched to be um, to be uh, working. Sorry, Carmack. Because um, Car- Caramac is a chocolate bar, Caramac but you know, chocolate bar. <laughs> Carmack, John Carmack. I don't but know. No, it's, it's, I, I read his tweet briefly before we came on, but he was sort of saying that he's been working with Microsoft for a while, and they're a really good company to work with, and he's excited for um, sort of stuff to happen in the future. Yeah, well, it's Carmack's a weird one because he's now at uh, Oculus, so the Facebook. He's all 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 in on VR, but obviously, Carmack was a weird one where. He was very heavily involved in a lot of the stuff at id all the way up to rage and i think he was gone before doom came out and all that stuff and he'd moved on to greener pastures so obviously like lots of people are talking about as you've just said carmack tweeted and and sort of sounding positive about uh, how how he feels about microsoft and the direction bethesda could go uh, uh, around them uh, romero the other john involved in the early days of of id software and doom and quake has also tweeted i want to say he just quoted his tweet was literally just an article about the uh about the takeover and he just tweeted out the word quake that's all he said <laughs> so nice. like who I, I don't know if they're right to believe that bethesda are gonna be more welcoming and approachable now that they're under microsoft but maybe it does loosen some of those things and the other thing to go full circle on what we were just saying is reuniting obsidian and bethesda under microsoft maybe sam you know, mm-hmm. brace yourself, opens the door for Fallout New Vegas stuff to happen again. Yeah, it does. Because Obsidian does. made that game back in the day. There's a, I saw a brilliant tweet. I don't know who it was by, I think it was by someone from Obsidian uh, that linked to, I think Tumblr of all things, um, which said, <laughs> Diddy and Bethesda are under, are under one, or it was about the Bethesda deal, like, you know, you know, all these companies work together, you know what that means. And then when you clicked on it, it said, Brink 2. <laughs> I, thought it was, I thought it was very good. You know, I bet there's some weirdos out there that probably are actually celebrating the idea of a brink too. There was, there was, <laughs> was. I think there's an article out there. Someone's already made. Like, what are the some of more the more interesting franchises that this deal could resurrect? And I guess that's the other thing, right? Is that this is about IP, and maybe Microsoft yeah. do actually look around and say, hey, instead of making another. I don't know, making another this, that, or the other. What if we pivoted and brought back something that does actually have a name but people haven't heard in a while? What if we made, what if we did for Quake what we did for Doom rather than focusing on the multiplayer stuff? You know, and, right. and shit like that. Yeah. It's possible. Because those IPs are part of the value, right? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you've got, to, you've got to expect that when you do a deal like this, part of the reason you've done it is because you're buying into, you know, good feeling you're buying into what people know or or think they know about names and things and those names are worth a shitload of money to people yeah um but i think we should move on from uh one microsoft story to another one because of course we covered pretty extensively uh the pre-orders for playstation last week and this week it was the return or sorry the the turn of xbox to put their pre-orders live um Despite the fact that it's actually coming out sooner than the PlayStation 5, it's coming out on the 10th of November uh, globally, um, the Xbox pre-order was after the PlayStation pre-order, but they did pretty well as well because they sold out of Xbox Series X probably in about, what, I guess the same sort of time frame as the PlayStation 5 managed to sell out. Seemed like it, right? Um, did, but they, um, they, had a, they seem to have... Sorry, mate, go on. Oh, sorry. I, I've only just realised I'm on a delay. Anyway, uh, didn't, didn't uh, loads of what Xbox One Series X sell out as well yeah, they did they did oh, yes. Sa- sales of xbox one x's went up like that's fucking it. almost 800 yeah, percent on amazon that, that, their naming system yeah. is so stupid because it's good i even did it while saying it i said xbox one series <laughs> x it's gonna yeah it's gonna confuse people i tell you what's funny is when i when i pre-ordered my playstation 5 the woman behind me in the queue was on the phone going like so what one am i getting is it the the the, the playstation 5 and i can just imagine now standing like a mum standing in a queue going i'm getting the x bone se- what one series x eh, what one am i getting and it just being like oh. carnage yeah yeah, yeah absolutely absolute carnage um so so they uh they had a so, so the pre-order seemed a little smoother right at the get go that they had a better I suppose time it was more global it seemed to go live on a lot more websites than this sort of playstation weird like late in the day sort of thing but we were sort of speculating in whatsapp the other day um that this might have given scalpers a little bit more chance and bots a little bit more chance to go and pre-order a whole load of them because it did seem like the xbox went out of stock um if not quicker than the playstation did you know just as quickly um which is not great sort of position for people to be in um 
because they did seem to have a more structured approach and people were saying, you know, PlayStation really screwed up. So yeah. it looks like they did a lot better. But um, what do you guys reckon? Do you think that scalpers and bots were sort of were, had a bit of a field day with the Xbox release? I think they could have a field day with any release, uh, any anything this big. I mean, you know, we saw it with the PS, PS5, I said PS4. We saw it with the PS5 as well. Um, it's just a sad state of affairs that's always going to happen, right? Yeah. Well, I think the the idea was because the PlayStation Five was so messy, <laughs> the release that maybe some of the bots and sort of scalpers they weren't ready struggled yeah. to yeah to get everything going in time because they weren't expecting it to kind of be that crap. Um, whereas because of the structure of the Xbox release, but I think you're right, Sam. I think they're always going to be they're always going to be ready to sort of take advantage of um, of any situation. I suppose it's, it's it's difficult, right? Because I think all three of us were in different shapes and forms on the front line of the battle to secure a PlayStation 5. Whereas for the Xbox side of things, although I am obviously still tangentially kind of interested in an Xbox, it's just not a day one for me thing, day one thing for me. So I was doing a lot of stuff on Twitter and a lot of people, and it might have been hyperbolic, it might have been this, that, and the other, it might have just been they were disappointed and they were venting, but a lot of people seem to suggest that it somehow ended up being worse than the PlayStation thing. And although the PlayStation issue was a lack of information creating chaos. The Xbox thing was having all the information you need and not being able to do anything about it. And there were, you know, reports of different... I think that someone, I can't remember who it was, but some journalist, it might have even been like a Jeff Keighley or something like that, or a Jason Schreier, listed every website you could think to go to for an Xbox and just listed the various problems they'd had with them. So it'd be like (laughs) Best Buy was able to put it in my basket but then couldn't check out. This site says it's out of stock. This site puts me in a queue, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, wow. I mean, obviously, these things were going to be in high demand. Even No matter what you think of the console race, the console war, one thing is always true, and that's that there's always going to be a huge amount of people that want either console day one, want to pre-order it. Those numbers were always going to go until the next waves came in. But I'm sort of surprised that Microsoft's forward-thinking approach might have backfired in the way it did. But then I, I don't know for sure. I'm just going off what I hear. It might not be true. Some people probably had it fine. I don't know. Um, I, I know Jeff Keighley um, was struggling to get an Xbox Series X um, when while well, he was tweeting about the fact that he was trying to get one and he, I think he was in a queue um, and he was struggling to find, uh, I think, get it on Amazon. But he he did manage to get one. So because um, I, I sort of I, I like the fact that he's been sort of nonstop tweeting what he's been doing in the last couple of weeks with regards to pre-orders and stuff. It's been quite entertaining and he's, mm. he's definitely been at the forefront recently but i i wanted to put a little question to both of you i'll go with sam first so let me set okay. you up because I, I i think i said to the guys in the whatsapp group jamie you so you would have already seen this before but i don't think the series s the xbox series s is can be classed as a next gen console because of some of the limitations it's got and um, I tweeted actually earlier today about the fact that the Xbox Series S was still available in at game. I think it was available at Argos. Do you think the Series S should be considered as a true next gen console, Sam? And because so, just in case, um, just for audience, um, so little things like it's not a 4K console. I think it's limited to. Yeah. Oh God, I can't remember. It's like it's a, a midway point. It's basically that they target 1440p, 120 frames a right. second, rather than 4K. It's got the same or at least a very comparable CPU and SSD to the Series X, but a massively inferior GPU to the point where the GPU is, if anything, like comparable, maybe even slightly weaker than the One X. Uh, So it very much placed in the middle. And for what it's worth, Xbox Series S still fully available on game as we record this. Game being a UK, the biggest UK games retailer. Yeah, so so Sam, I've the, the question being: do, do, Would you consider it a, a next gen console, or do you think it is maybe like a halfway house? Yeah, if it, it feels like a stepping stone to next gen rather than next gen, and it feels kind of strange that it's um, obviously you would have to have those kind of, or rather, something's got to give. If you want to release a cheaper console, um, you've got to cut the cost somewhere, right? Um, but it sure. does it does feel like this strange stepping stone that feels like it should come in the middle of a generation as opposed to like as simultaneously releasing with a new one if that makes sense it feels yeah it feels like a strange yeah as you, as you you said it perfect perfectly halfway house um and it does feel like it's going to confuse some people who are buying stuff 
for <laughs> for people at Christmas time, etc. Um, as someone who used to work in a game store or game shop, um, I can tell you that that's going to be. It was confusing back in the days of just Xbox Ones and PlayStation 4s. It's going to be so much more confusing now. But anyway, I digress. Um, I think I think it's a straight... Yeah, as I say, I think it's, an, it's a stepping stone console that's weirdly being released at the same time as the thing it's stepping towards. It's yeah, I, I think I think I I because I agree with you. I think yeah. it is um I I think I agree with everything you said. I know uh, Jamie, we we spoke before about um the S, and I think you were talking about how it's really good for accessibility and it kind of gives them the ability to uh cover the gamut of systems and to have the most powerful and also to have like the the cheapest machine, the one that's an entry level. Yeah. One. But like, so would you would you consider it next gen though, or would you uh, consider? Can it I like can, a, can I respond with something like really shitty because it's like yeah, a, yeah, it's yeah. indirect. I think asking whether or not the Xbox Series S is a next-gen console is asking the wrong question. It's kind okay. of like someone showing you their brand new moped and you going, "Well, it's not a motorbike, though, is it?" <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I think it's. A, okay. I, I get, I guess, sense, I I think get it's a fair question. Uh, no, it, um, which isn't my way of saying it. That wasn't uh, me saying it's an unfair question, but it was a, kind of me saying that even if Xbox do, and I think they might have already. What's the right level? What's the right question? Let's go with that. <sighs> does does it have? Oh. Does it fill a gap in the market? Okay. Okay. That's yeah. That's fair. So I, think, I think I think there are a huge amount of people that do care about the quote unquote next gen banner. I think they care about that, term. and I think that's why Microsoft will probably, if they haven't already, use the words next gen somewhere around the advertising, the marketing of the Series S. Whether that in itself is fair or unfair, that some people might buy a Series S and believe they're getting a next gen console, is up for debate. That gets into the weird nitty gritty of to what extent can Microsoft squeeze a CPU in an SSD to get tangible improvements over a previous generation? How much of an improvement does it need to be? And can you still be next gen if there are more next gen things that coexist? Right. Yeah. I I, I just I, but it's kind of just what you and Sam were saying, which is that this for me was Xbox not even thinking about next gen, not even thinking about power levels or what the right middle ground to find was on any of that stuff. It was about finding a spot in the market at that price point at that you know even at that size at that form factor it was a it was about something sure. that people looked at more and more as the years rolled by and say actually if i did want a route into the xbox world that wasn't through a pc if i do want a way to play the Elder scrolls 6 maybe the xbox series s makes sense uh i i I, i'm not good enough uh, predicting the future to know whether or not that will work I'm, I'm not surprised it's not that popular out of the gate because i don't think anyone really cares about being an early adopter of a naturally inherently inferior piece of hardware but i think this is the, the export series s is a console for the long run um it's 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 the you know it's 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 the it's the second console. It's the it's the PlayStation Five and a Series S. It's the PC and the Series S. It's the my parents will only let me get the cheapest console, or I can only afford the cheapest console purchase. It's not what people buy day one. When people buy day one, it's because you're talking about the most enthusiastic, the most deeply ingrained in the world of gaming consumers that want to spend the, the money. The early adopters who the, want to be Exactly, there. the early yeah. adopters, yeah. the most hardcore of the hardcore. And what do we want to do? We all want to spend money. How many people have I spoken to who want the disc version of the PS5 rather than digital? Almost everyone that I've spoken to. They can't <laughs> yeah, even put into words why sometimes, but it's just like, in for a penny, in for a pound. We're here, we're day one, it's PlayStation 5, it's exciting, let's spend money. The Xbox Series S doesn't fit that bill, and I think in that sense, its fate will play out over the course of the next handful of years. But I still think... It's an interesting and potentially smart proposition from Microsoft, regardless of whether or not you think it's next gen, which is a long winded way of not answering your question. Sorry, Jonesy. No, no, I, th I think it, I think you make a really good point because I, I suppose my initial reaction when they announced the spec was kind of like they're sort of shooting themselves in the foot a little bit because they're going away from you know the selling point of the Xbox Series X. But no, I've I've definitely been swayed to the point that um, it's actually a really smart proposition because, like you said, I think it might not be a day one one, but I yeah. think early next year, um, leading on to like the rest of next year, ne the like not this Christmas but twenty twenty one. I think the Series S becomes a much better proposition for like the mid tier market who aren't going to get one day one, but then six months later, a year yeah. later, they're uh, like, "What a great do, priced console!" Do you want to um, know something yeah, else yeah. I don't see discussed enough? The Xbox One X, so the <clears throat> most powerful of the current crop of Xbox consoles, has already been discontinued. 
It was discontinued back in right. July. They don't make them anymore. We will eventually get to a point where this will just be the de facto cheap Xbox. And again, with what they're pushing, Game Pass backwards compatibility, three generations, four generations. I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna think of numbers quickly of Xbox games. It will just become the thing, and it won't matter if that makes sense. What the GPU compares to to the One X, because the One yeah. X won't be on the table anymore. It's like, do you want to go big? Do you want to go small? And yeah. some people will, <laughs> well, you know, don't have to laugh about that, gents. It's it's not about the size. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Talking about size, though, can I give you guys a little tidbit? Oh, sorry, Sam, oh, go on. Oh, is this God, about I'm your penis? I'm, 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 I'm terrified what we're about to say after that. No, I was actually—I was just going to add a little um, interesting uh, factoid that um, we got teased with this week because there was a, a brief leak. I think it was on Smith's Toys um, pre-order site where um, they had like PlayStation Five, Xbox Series X, and when the Xbox Series X went live they had the price of the one terabyte expansion cards for the Xbox Series X and the S, and they were priced at £159. So it's a UK site, so it was only in pounds. But I thought that was um, interesting because um, that's that's a, a reasonable price, I suppose, for that, an expansion card. Um, but it kind of puts you in a weird place that if you go for the Xbox Series S, which has got half the storage of the X, you add that 159 quid onto the price of it and you sort of say, well, you might as well just bought the X in the first place. It's not much point um, doing that. So, yeah, I was I was surprised that the how, I don't know, I thought that was a little pricey in, in that, thinking of it like that for those cards. But Yeah, I know what you mean. But but then, you're, you're as Jamie said, I'd like... Well, personally, if I was to get an Xbox for those uh, for those exclusives, if they do intend to be exclusives, um, I would get the S because it's the smaller option and it's like it's like a sup- it's a supplementary thing. Um, whereas you know, the, it's, it's the Bethesda machine. It's like we said, it's, yeah. it's literally going to be people buy it for Bethesda. Yeah, all yeah, other. The, the, the- Oh, Sorry, Sam, I was going to say, but it's, not, it's also like you're talking about Game Pass, and this is the thing with all their first party stuff and services in general. They don't, they care less about what you buy it for and more about what you stay for. Yes. Yeah. Buy it for Bethesda, sure. Buy it for Elder Scrolls, but stay because you realize that you can play, maybe you've never played the Halo game, and now you can play all six of them at once, back to back to back to back, completely for free with what you've already paid for. Sorry, Sam. Yeah, no, 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 you're, you're absolutely right. And I think, um, I think that it's going to be interesting to see what those kind of uh, you know year two pri- uh, sales figures are going to be for for the S. I would say, yeah, uh, and 100%. whether or not people you know will need expansions on top of that, etc. For for memory. Yeah, that that no, I'm I'm interested to see that as well because I think um, like Jamie said, I think it might pick up and I think it might start to do better I, I was interested that when I went to when I pre-ordered the PlayStation 5 um, kind of counter to what you said Jamie they were completely sold out of the digital PS5 I thought people would go for the disc version but they had quite a lot of the disc versions left apparently and the, the, I, then you have to wonder how many do they produce of each one that, 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 kind of- that's the thing that I think people are trying to figure out is the manufacturing numbers and what the ratio that PlayStation actually produced were fair play to them if it's 50-50 but I think if they, if Sony believed, I don't know, I could, but, but I don't know, I don't know. If Sony believed that all the PlayStations they were going to make were going to sell out guaranteed, you'd make more of the expensive one. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you probably would. I think, I think come Christmas um, time, uh, you're going to, oh, sorry, Jonesy, I didn't mean to. No, 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 God. So, so anyone, anyways, we've, there's, when you do have a delay, it's a little bit, sometimes yeah. you start talking. This is, this is one of the more unusual it's, it's delays bizarre. we've ever it's had. Like, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, it's bizarre. It's like we're in a, I'm in a different country, but I'm not to dox <laughs> myself, but I'm not. Um, <laughs> the, it, it's going to be interesting when come Christmas time with, with consumers who aren't um, that au fait with the gaming world. And to see with 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 PS Five especially, I think you'll have some people going in to buy for their um, you know partners or kids or whatever uh, who don't really know the gaming world that well who will say okay what's the difference between this this PlayStation Five and this one um, and they'll say this one is a disc drive and then they'll say can it still play the same games and they say yeah and I go, well I'll take the cheaper one then I think I do think we will see, we will yeah. see that happen. Yeah, no, I think that's a, I think that's a good shout. So like I say, especially when you start to get into people who, who or kids who'll say to their parents, "Oh, I would like this," and they're like, "Well, 
why am I going to spend an extra, like, whatever it is, 100 quid in order to get you yeah. this one versus that one? Yeah, for sure. Should we move on to... So should we, we've got time for, I think, for one more little story. Do you fancy one more story? Let's should we talk it, about some Cyberpunk 2077? Hell yeah. Uh, because they had their um, third Night City Wire, um, which is their sort of... Uh, what was it? Like, bi-monthly, monthly... Um, little tease i guess some, uh, maybe it's not that um, something like that that regular but they've been releasing sort of little tidbits of information i keep saying the tidbit this week is i don't know why it's in my it's in my brain i used to, I used um, to think that the d in that word was a t and used to say it as such tidbit, tidbit. yeah <laughs> tidbit <laughs> this little, and Constantly. Yeah, why not i don't know what in fact what i think I'm, a tid. I'm pretty sure i wrote it in a in actual school essays you know this 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 tit bit of information <laughs> now, now I'm just trying to think, like, yeah, what the context for using the word tidbit is for in an essay. It's almost like you're saying to the marker, like, here's a little bit of tidbit of knowledge here's for a, you, here's, Mr. Marker. Here's a little bit of, here's a little bit of something, something. Do you know what? I'm not surprised, seeing where Sam is now doing 101 facts, I'm not surprised <laughs> at all that he was giving the examiner a little true. bit of extra, yeah, well, extra flavour. Yeah, got to give him, go. give him something. Absolutely. Um, but so, yeah, in the in Cyberpunk, um, in the latest uh, Night City Wire, we got to see a little bit more of the, the gangs and some more of the city. Um, they sort of keep revealing this um, uh, more of the world to us, which has been pretty epic. They also touched on the fact that the game is going to be slightly shorter than The Witcher 3 because they thought that it was a little bit too long. Um, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Is that a, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Uh- I'm, I'll just quickly pick up on the second point you made there about how they're actively acknowledging that Cyberpunk 2077's story will be shorter than The Witcher 3. I think more power to them. I think that's great. I think that a lot of games nowadays are incredibly long, but not just that. I think a lot of people who play games started to get confused at some point in the last 10 years or so to think that bigger always equals better. And look, we talked about Outer Worlds earlier, right? Uh, and that as compared to Fallout 4 or something. Bigger does not always equal better. Having stories that are <laughs> needlessly long it means that a lot of players drop off and it's difficult to maintain pacing and so on and so forth. It's something that a lot of open world games are having trouble with recently. I think if this is their way of saying, hey, the story start to finish runs a shorter time that you might have thought, but we've still got our world and all the side stuff that you want to experience there waiting for you, perfect. More power to them. Great decision. I think... That's to be expected as well, right? Because obviously you've got the three different life paths uh, and we don't know how much they kind of cross over, if you like, or whether they start in three different places and then kind of converge into the same storyline or whatever. But the, but from in terms of a memory point of view... Um, <laughs> sorry, I just thought that's, that's memory a- is RAM. Uh, no, <laughs> but if, when they kind of go into the... In terms of pure space on a disc, it's going to be it's going to be shorter compared to The Witcher 3 where you just play as... Geralt. Uh, yeah. Geralt, or however you want to say it. Um, it's it's going to be shorter. And I think that there is something to be said of... I mean, even looking at it from the point of view of maps, right? In in open world games, sometimes they... You know, um, there's, this, there's this kind of strange thing of, oh, this game is twice the size of the other one. And that doesn't really mean anything yeah. if the world's not populated. So, like, Cyberpunk doesn't seem like it has the biggest map in the world, but it seems incredibly intricate and vertical and i think from a story point of view it looks like they're trying to do this a similar thing and as jamie said that can only be that can only be a good thing as long as it's not like the order 1886 which is like <laughs> 10 hours or something mental um oh, dude. yeah uh, yeah it can only be a good thing i think I think I think you're right. I think the vert, like you say, the, with the verticality of the city. I mean, there's a good analogy, right? They've got a smaller city, but they're packing more into it. And I think, especially with um, with story uh, or campaigns in in open world games, sometimes you can get caught up in the fact of, oh, this game is not as long as this game. But actually, how much is there to do in side quests? How much of the city is there to explore? How much yeah. are they packing into everything else in this? How many? How much can you do the skill tree? Like, I'm a, I'm a person that when I play open world. Um, story games i'll play it for two three four times as long as the actual game should be because i spend so much time trying to take in that world so yeah no for me for me it's, it's if anything it will mean that i ma- i managed to stick with the story longer before i inevitably drop off it at some point i yeah. might have already played a hundred odd hours in that world and um, but won't necessarily get all the way to the end but yeah man the more i see about that game the the more i, I get excited about it and even I mean, some people have criticized, not criticized, but I think some people early on said some of the gangs were a little bit, um, I don't know what the word is. Stereotypey? Like, 
derivative mm. stereotypy, I think some of that. But actually, I think the more they talk about them, the more they um, they show off, uh, the more I'm like, okay, I kind of see what they're doing here. They're trying to add some nuance. They're trying to add some flavor. Um, I think one of the gangs that stood out to me in the recent Night City Wire, um, you know, when we talk about the world and, and how much is going to be in it, and they were talking about, I can't remember what they're called, but the guys who are like, um, they're almost like the Borg. Like they take yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cyber mods too far and they end up with... They they look like flies because that- they've got too many red eyes all over their is that face. The, are they, they the Maelstrom? Yeah, uh, I ca- maybe yeah. I can't remember the name. I think they Maelstr- might be the Maelstrom. But like that, that's a that's a very typical stereotypical kind of sci fi ish thing to include in a game. But hey, when you actually look at that as a as a gang, look at it in that environment, it looks damn cool. And even is it the mo- I think the Moxies are like the female gang who wear like fur coats and stuff, and they have a lot of pink and purple. They're like the Harley they Quinn, the cool. Harley Quinn of cyberpunk. Yeah, exactly. But hey, they just look wicked as well. Like I want to experience all of these gangs and experience this world. And, you know, and the more I see of it, the gang gangs gangs in themselves are all going to be this, that. Like as in everyone in that group is going to be almost the same. That's how you define them. Looking at them in a game, right? So it's going to happen. <laughs> And you you must need that, right? You must need a bit of stereotyping yeah. in order so that you know well, that they're in a gang and that they belong together. Otherwise, it, I guess they just look like normal people who spread around. But, I, but I, do you know what? Unless I, there's anything else you guys want to talk about with Cyberpunk 2077 or I, anything else we've mentioned. I, I was just going to say, I appreciate the Night City Wires. I think yeah. it's cool they're giving us more info on Cyberpunk, but if ever there were a candidate for a game that needs to shut up and come the fuck out, <laughs> it's Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> I don't want to look at that game anymore. I want to play it. And because the more I look at it, the more I start to second guess myself. And I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I want to be excited. I know See, what you mean. If I was one of those, I'm not on the hype train for Cyberpunk. And I think if I was... Bullshit, you know, bullshit. The Get the Hang fuck on. out of here. You fucking like, show us your chair. You yeah, scumbag. I was going to say. Look at that. There you go. Uh, so now, now I don't love. It. Now show your tattoo. Show us your tattoo. Your Cyberpunk yeah. twenty seven tattoo. <laughs> no, I've changed the name of my kids to Cyber and Punk. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I've done. Oh God! But uh, Can you imagine Cyber. So, so, you know what? You joke, but Cyber Jones and Punk Jones are kind of good names. <laughs> Cyber Jones. I don't think you'd be allowed. I reckon there'd be those names like that. They get you know you get banned from calling your kid. Jo- Jones, are you going to go on the? Well, I'm going to guess. Are you going to go on the nomad path? Uh, no. So cor- uh, corpo. I think I'm going to go. Oh, because I thought I thought nomad would be you all over, especially because when I when I thought when I th- the reason I thought that was because I don't know if, and I don't know if you've spoken about this on the podcast before, but Jonesy has these shoes that are like that's <laughs> good. Like do a proper, proper proper nomad shoes. They're like they have. Uh, what are they made of? They're made of like Vulcan rubber or something, yeah. and they and they're, they have like toes stick, like individual toe holes. Vibram five fingers. That's what they're called. Vibram yeah. five fingers. Yeah, the vi- Vibram are like a, a well known like soul brand, right? Shoe soul brand or some like Trek soul brand. But and it they just, make, yeah, Vibram five fingers. It just made me think that you would you would you would fit with Nomad Life quite well, and the fact that you live out in the countryside and. You know. I do you know what I was I was very close to going nomad. It's interesting because yeah. um uh we talked about it before on the pod actually, and I'm pretty sure that Chris and Jamie both said that they were gonna go the street kid route. Um and oh, yeah. I, well I don't, we had a reason for it as well. I don't know if you remember. I, I know what reason I remembered was the real reason. I don't know if it's the one that you guys used, which is because you're both like privately edu- private school boys oh, and you want and you, you want to and you want to live some sort of like working class <laughs> fantasy in cyberpunk. No, the reason the reason was was because stru- <laughs> if you were going to choose one of those paths that felt like yeah. the one that CD Projekt Red had designed the game to be played as based on their interpretation and their depiction of V right, and that right. world, that's the one that made the most sense to me. Yeah. Like oh, okay. I don't, no, yeah, I didn't no, watch no, any of yeah. those trailers or any of the gameplay or any things they've shown so far, and thought this is a uh, hillbilly who grew up in the countryside. <laughs> no, you. Like fair, he, I, he's I street, well, he's yeah. streetwise. He's doing deals. He's, you know, he's a gangster. Yeah. Oh, for as, as long as as far back as he can remember, he always wanted to be a gangster. <laughs> I, th- I think Sam, you would have been right about me with the nomad, but the thing that swayed yeah. it for me was um, uh, altered carbon. 
Like I like that game oh. kind of scratches the same sort of itch for me. And in that, Takeshi Kovac is very much the um uh well he's thrust into the thing of like working for the corpos, right? Because that's his, the impetus of this, that of the first season of All to Carbon. Is this before or after he builds the castle? Builds a castle? Does Tekeshi's he build a castle? Ca- Jonesy, castle, come on, man. Oh, you've got to yeah. get, you got to <laughs> get Jeez, a move man. on, Jonesy. Wow. Oh, Al, and I, I mean, sorry, I know it's late in the day, that. but Jesus Christ, it's one of the most important TV touchstones in cultural history. Oh, yeah, there you go. Incredible scenes. But, uh, Sam, Sam, which yeah. I'm going to guess that you, if I had to guess, I would say that you would go, I reckon you might go Nomad. Jay, do you, do you have a guess of where I might go? I think I think you're nomad. No, see, no, I think Corpo looks very interesting. Corporate, ah, there you the, go. the corporate espionage looks looks interesting to me. Uh, but but I do ag- but enough. I do agree with I do agree with what you said, Jay. But where it does seem like in all the story ish stuff that we've seen, it seems like Street Kid is the way the the thrust of the narrative originally was going to be. Yeah. And like maybe maybe people want to create their own path. That's totally cool. But that was one of the things that stood out for me is that I like if one of let's say for the sake of argument one of these was going to be more tailored for kind of as you suggested earlier, Sam, when these paths eventually converge mm. and we get the story of Cyberpunk. Does one of them make more sense than the others, or do they kind of handle that transition naturally? I'm, I'm we'll, part of the fun of finding out. And and as exactly like you said, Sam. A shorter story, a shorter campaign can allow us to see this world and, and that adventure from many different yeah. angles. So another positive. I think one thing I'm really looking yeah. forward to with uh, Cyberpunk is that, and this may be because it reminds me of the uh, Arkham Detective mode thing, but uh, the brain dance thing looks really cool. Yeah. I like the look of that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of cool really stuff. Like, really like the look of that. Um, I think all that's left to do then is to uh, get, have a little phrase that people can put in the comments down um, below on YouTube in order to let us know that I, they've made it to the end. I've got one idea, one suggestion that I'm going to throw out there based on something you just said. Go on. Jonesy's Five Finger Foot Club. Yes, that's what I was going to say as well. <laughs> I was, you know what, I was going to say a similar thing, but I was going to be a bit more rude, which is to say you just put oh. Five Finger Fuck Boys in the... Um, that works as well. Maybe it's a combination also- of the two. That's also in my Tinder bio as well. I don't know how you knew that. <laughs> what, what about what about Jonesy's five finger fuck glove? Oh yeah. No, Jones Jonesy's five finger foot That's... fuck. <laughs> yeah. This is getting weird. You're the one who like called the fuck five, into it. It sounds like a five, five finger club or whatever you said. Wait, what, what, yeah, what did you fu- say, Jay? I, the first one was Jonesy's five finger foot glove, which yeah. is actually just what five it is. Foot glove. It sounds oh, like okay. it sounds like a tribute act for Five Finger Death Punch. <laughs> Maybe it is. <laughs> Watch the foot space. Glove, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Any combination of those will be accepted as a uh, a little thing to let us know that you've made it to the end of the video. If you're listening to this um, on an audio platform, maybe head over to YouTube to put that in the comments just to let us know that you've uh, made it to the end. Um, but hey. Anyone out there who's watched this, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Sam, for coming on and being um, our guest this thank week. You for have, thanks for having me on, giving me the podcasting bug. Uh, it's, it's, been, it's been very enjoyable, and hopefully we will arrange a, uh, an Among Us um, live stream oh, of yeah. some description at some point, and hopefully you can join us, and that would be pretty Ho- good. Hopefully so. Um, I suppose all that's left to say is if you are not already a member of the um, of our Patreons and you would like to go into go on our Discord, you can go to patreon.com forward slash super show pod. I think it's super is it super show pod, Jamie? Have I got that wrong? It's super show pod on on Twitter and YouTube, I think. Uh, t- Patreon is just super show, I think. Ah, oh, just super show. Chris is going to be so mad that I absolutely got that wrong. Um, but hey. If you would like to listen to this on an audio platform and you're currently watching it on YouTube or vice versa, then why not, you know, next week, give yourself a little bit of a change. Listen to it or watch it. It's completely up to you. Um, And if you are listening to this on a podcast platform, give us a five star rating if you think it is deserving of it. And I think all that's left to say is we will see you next time. And thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Bye.